but that's that, and that was my question. Start this recording. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you first the, the, the challenger, the brother from ISUPK, Mr. Captain Tazariak. You got five minutes, brother. Tazariak, you're up. Your mic is muted, brother. I'm sorry. Um, I can't be the challenger and be going first. I got to be the. Is that how it goes? I'm not saying I don't want to go first. It's all, it's all it's all boxing talk. Go ahead, my brother. Oh, okay. I'm like the ass whooper. Like... <laughs> all right. <laughs> go all ahead. Right. Introduce hey, yourself. Hey, I'm Captain Tazaria. Hey, I'm Captain of ISBK under commander Jenny Hanna. Today we have between himself and Reginald again. You might want to get rid of rid of Reginald. Um, today we have a debate between myself and Shaka Amos. Um, a lot of people look at it as a long time coming. He and I have had a lot of, um, you know, heated discussions, most of them predicated by me. So I did a lot of trash talking leading up to this debate. Um, it won't be none of that, uh, I guess, personal stuff. Um, if he wouldn't, have, I don't know why he chose to talk about the stuff he talked about before the debate, uh, because none of that stuff would be mentioned in this debate. The excellent caveat to this debate is I can't talk about Kemet. He can't talk about the Bible. What do I mean by that? Normally, when I try to have this type of debate where we just talk about what can actually fix the community, either I or my opponent ends up just doing the usual, you know, you copied this. This was established 3,000 years ago and stuff like that. We're not talking about nothing from 3,000 years ago. We're not talking about any of that. What I mean by 3,000 years ago, we're not talking about like somebody being the original civilization, original language, or anything like that. What has to be exemplified today is how that is relevant today. Meaning who, what I know about with the Bible and what I'll show is from our time in slavery up until today, we are using that for our liberation. It's active. The most prominent leaders that we've had in America has used that Bible even if they call themselves a Muslim, even if they call themselves a panther, no matter what they call themselves, they have used the Bible as the blueprint for their liberation. I have never seen it with Kemet. All I've ever seen from that side is how great it was and this and that. So and this, I created this title. This title is my fault. Uh, Vito, you might want to move the mic, Vito. I created this title because I felt that Shaka was scholarly enough to just deal with the subject. My, my apologies, brother. My apologies. I'm, yeah, I know, Kat. I know. Hold on, hold on. Everybody, please keep your mics muted. All right, go ahead, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate Shaka taking on the challenge of not being able to talk about the Bible. I know it's a difficult one. Just like me not talking about Kemet is a difficult one. But I'm looking forward to seeing what the information, I think the winners of this debate should be the people. What I mean by that is if you truly believe in the Bible and truly believe that that's revolutionary for us, I'll show you information on that, whether it's a Bible verse, whether it's somebody using it. Um, and for the same, same other side, for Shaka's side, Shaka should be able to show the same exact thing I'm going to show. So with that, I'm ready to rock and roll. I know he gets his five minutes, of course, but again, I'm Captain Tazaryak of ICVK under Commander Jenny Hanna, and um, that's all I got. I'm gonna mute my mic. All right, thank you, my brother. Peace and love to you. Um, let, ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you my big brother, Shaka Amos. He has five minutes to lay out his plan and introduce himself to the people. Shaka Amos, you could unmute and get the ball rolling. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I could hear you loud and clear. He had to be on mute on, on camera. Oh, there you go. My, my bad. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I'm not sure what you guys are seeing, so I just want to make sure what you're seeing is appropriate. All right, cool. Can you see me? Yes, sir. I could see okay. you. All right. I donned, I, I, I donned a cot uh, uh, in honor of uh, Tazoriak's uh, crown of barbed wire. So uh, here we go. His barbed wire thorns. Uh, who is this? From... Something to everyone from can't see them. Okay, so I'm going to ignore those messages. Okay, so um, can you guys hear me and see me? Yes, I could see you, and you you sound clear. Okay, great. Um, so uh, I'm going to zone. Uh, first of all, my for those of you who don't know me, 
I'm pretty sure many of you know me or all of you know me. Um, I'm called Shaka Amos. And uh, I represent uh, quite a few things, but this evening uh, I'm representing um, native literature of ancient Kemet and I'm representing primarily a position. That's what I'm representing. I'm representing a position. And um, the position that I'm gonna be uh, representing is something uh, in reference uh, to what uh, Tazoria just said moments ago. So I'm gonna address it uh, very briefly, take a few seconds uh, so that you can see, um, but you'll understand, you'll understand, you'll understand why, um, why I'm choosing to take the approach that I'm taking. So he said a moment ago that the title of tonight's debate is his fault. That's what he said out of his own mouth. I didn't say it, he said it. And that's key. That is key, right? When you go buy a book, uh, you, first thing you're usually looking at is the title, right? When people are promoting a marketing book, it's the title. Titles matter. When people win a debate, what do they want? They want to get a title, right? Titles matter. When you own something, you have to have a title for it. It's a car, it's a boat, right? Even a house, you have to have a title. So titles matter. And so we're going to be, I, I'm going, the, the majority of my, of my presentation will be uh, focused on the title. Because at the end of the day, my primary concern is, is legitimately um, resolving um, the problems of our people. And uh, in order to do that, um, uh, I'm of the firm perspective that a focused approach is what's necessary. And so um, I don't know if I'll be presenting in a traditional way. I don't know if I'll be presenting in a way that corresponds to how Tazoriak is gonna to choose to present, but I'm not here to fight his fight. I'm here to fight my own fight and to uh, represent uh, and advocate for my own perspective. So therefore I will be presenting in my own way. The challenge for me will be um, uh, uh, getting it all out. I, I tried to sue for 30 minute rounds um, that he would have 30 minutes, I would have 30 minutes. Uh, my opponent wanted to limit it to 10 minutes uh, uh, we had to struggle to get him to 15 minutes. Uh, just before we came on, um, I was really suing for at least 20 minutes um, uh, because uh, I think in order for things to be explained clearly that they need, there needs to be a buildup. There needs to be a, 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 some type of preparation. The, the mind needs to be primed, right? So uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not attempting to present first grade material or, or junior high school, um, have a junior high school discussion. So, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, whatever I don't present um, uh, in the debate, you'll have to catch it on my platform. And um, I guarantee that it's worth seeing the entire thing in its entirety. Um, when you see it all in its entirety, you'll probably come to the conclusion that uh, uh, it's worth a lot more than what, than what you paid for. Um, so uh, that's where he is going to be blessed tonight. My challenge is much greater than uh, his is. I have to present much larger ideas in a much smaller space. So... Um, so my opponent got to choose the title. Um, he also got to choose the handicap, which was the restrictions of not being of us. Now he presumes and promotes the myth that he only chose one thing, which is the title, which is false. One thing he Israelites do with literally every sentence is a false sentence. Or even when they speak truthfully, it's still a false sentence. It's like um, Tony Montana from Scarface, when he said, even when I tell her, he said, even when I lie, I tell the truth. With the Hebrew Israelites, it's the opposite. Even when they tell the truth, they lie, right? So. He said that he only chose one thing, which was the title of the debate, which is what my focus is going to be on. The reality of it, he chose the title of the debate and he chose the parameters in which the the, the the debate, the context in which the debate would take place. So it's all geared towards him, right? You have to understand that. It's all geared towards him. And so um, I have to operate within those small parameters, which is my challenge. So I'm not crying about it. I'm just explaining to you what the nature uh, of the situation is. Uh, that's okay. time. That's time, my brother. That's okay. time. All right, thank you, my brother. Uh, mute up, keep your camera on. All right, so for the first round, we're going to have Captain Tazariak. Um, He's going to go for 15 minutes. Let me set the clock, set the timer and everything. Um, Tazariak, I want to say, um, are you ready, brother? Do you need to share your screen and um, get the ball rolling? Yeah, I'm going to share it twice. So, hold, on, uh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on one second, um, 
Captain, I'm going to mute you for a second. I want everybody to stay on mute. The only person should be off mute should be my brother, Captain Tazaria. All right? We're not allowed. We, there's no cameras. Please turn your cameras off. If you're having audio problem, which I just got a couple of emails, come out of the Zoom meeting. And then when you're coming back in, it's going to ask you which audio, pick the Wi-Fi or your Wi-Fi audio. If that doesn't work, go back out and pick the other option, the dialing option or whatever. All right. All right, family. Um, we're here. We got over 400 people in the building. It's a lot of people. So um, again, please stay on mute. All right. Um, Tazaria, you could come off mute and you could start. When you start sharing, I'll share and, um, and we go from there. Can you hear me, Garfield? Like if I say yeah. I just saw Shaka spraying that Egyptian musk on his underarms, you can hear that? Oh, man. I didn't hear that part. <laughs> oh man! I I got two shares. I, got, I can't. Shaka didn't know the camera was on. He over there. He All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me right. uh, hold on one second. Let me get. I got my clock ready. We do it fifteen minutes. So let me know when you're ready, and we could go from there. Okay, hold on. I uh I got two shares that I have. I have one share of the uh video. And then I have another share. Now, of course, if he ever asked to share, his time can be paused as well. Um, just so you know. So I have two shares. Give me one second to get to it. Just bear with me, y'all, please. I appreciate it. All right. Should be popping up. There's my internet acting slow, so I apologize for that. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me come here. Share. Boom. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We see a video. All right. So I'm going to start with this video. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Reginald Baker, for some reason, you choose to come off your, your, your mic constantly. I don't know what's going on here. I really don't know. Um, I'll send you a copy in the morning. Yeah, I'll send you a copy in the morning. That was wise. That, that don't that don't make that don't make no sense right now. Um let me just let these people in. People coming to see Shaka and you, bro. They love y'all. I think All it's right. a good debate. I mean, it's long been a long time coming. I think I first right. back in 2014 when I made uh Shaka stumble on the street. So now here we are. So let me know when you, you, I can play the video yet? Yes, you could play whenever you're ready. I could start your time right now. I know, swear. And then you'll pause when I switch to my PowerPoint, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go All ahead. All right, so ready? I'm ready to go. You can start my time now. Okay, so in this video I'm about to play, remember the title of this debate is Kemet versus the Bible, which one can actually fix our community. So I'm going to show a timeline or a streamline. Now, I want to start with this video here. This is Khalid Muhammad, one of the most prominent black men that has graced America even though he's a Muslim, here's what he took a chance to say um, when he actually had his hands on the Bible. I'm just gonna play this clip real fast. Is it all right? Put this book down. But the Bible is a roadmap to our liberation and salvation. It's properly understood. From Genesis to Revelation, the Bible actually has our history. We are living in the Bible right now, brothers and sisters. We are walking on the pages of Scripture. But you must go in the Bible with a proper understanding. Otherwise, you'll go in a fool and come out an even bigger fool. All right, I'm going to start my share just so I can share my PowerPoint now. Uh, Garfield. All right. Here. Yes, sir. I could hear you. And I'll start the time back right now. No, no, don't start it yet because, you know, I'll, I'll be jamming up when I... Uh start the slideshow. So I'm going to start, go to my slideshow from current slide. Um, can you see it now? Yes. Am I supposed to, ain't I supposed to move something? Let's see. I didn't see, I didn't see anything moved at all. Like this, right? You can see my screen now, right? There you go. All right, no sweat. You can start my time. Has Kemet ever sparked a revolution of any kind for black people in America? Like this, like, and even this list that I have right here is not even long enough to really represent the list of blacks that have used the Bible as their liberation. So on this list, you have Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, 
Rabbi Ford, Rabbi Matthews, Ben Amin, MLK, Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, uh, Cherry, Malcolm X, Khalid uh, Muhammad, David Walker, the Deacons for Defense, Absalom Jones, Black Panther Party, Harriet Tubman, W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Douglass, Henry McNeil Turner, William S. Crowdy. These are just some of the individuals that over time would go and read those records, would go and read that Bible. Some of them would say they even had divine inspiration from the God of the book that will lead them to liberate their people or build something for their people, establish a foundation, establish a government. If we do just a brief overlook of the black religious history, just seven churches, you have the earliest church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church um, established in 1816. You have the Episcopal Zion Church established in 1821. You have the Christian Methodist Episcopal in 1870, the National Black Baptist Convention in 1880, the Church of God in Christ, almost sound like GOCC, 1897, the National Baptist Convention in 1915. The first African church was actually organized in 1773 under the leadership of Reverend George Lee. Now, what's going to be interesting, and I did a lecture on this because a lot of people say, well, may say, well, Cap, you're using the church. This church that we read, or that we're going to see in the early 1700s, in the 1800s, before integration came, before we thought it was better to assimilate with the so-called white man, they would be <clears throat> what y'all would call ISUBK today. They would be what y'all would call the Israelites today. So now it has the slave Bible, and I'm pretty sure we all heard of the slave Bible, which omitted key passages that could incite rebellion. On display at the museum in Washington, D.C., anybody can go check out this rare Bible from the 1800s. And what's notable about the Bible is not just its rarity, but its content, or rather lack thereof, because it excludes any portion that might inspire rebellion or liberation. They always like to say the Bible is uh, uh, copied or the Bible is plagiarized, there's missing things out of the book. Well, we found what the white man took out. He took out anything that you might read that said, free yourself, empower yourself. It's high time to come out of sleep. Anthony Smith, the associate curator of the Bible and Religion in America, says the first instance of this abridged version titled Parts of the Holy Bible, selected for use of the Negro slaves, the British West India slaves, was published in 1807. About 90% of the Old Testament is missing. 50% of the New Testament is rent missing. So imagine then giving you the Bible where all of the verses is about you being a good servant to a master, as opposed to seeing vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. That might inspire you to say, well, this man is leading me in captivity. Let me get out of this captivity. It says in the verses that reinforce the institution of slavery, the most famous pro-slavery verse that many pro-slavery people would have cited is Ephesians 6 and 5, which says, servants be obedient to them that are your masters. The NIV version would say, slaves be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear, trembling, singleness of heart as unto Christ. But what they won't tell you or won't include is that the actual verse 9 in the same chapter says, and ye masters do the same things unto them. Why? Because the Bible is not about a master having full dominance over a servant, nor a servant being abused by a master. So the same thing a master does, excuse me, the same thing a servant does for a master, the master has to do the same for them. That's why Christ washed their feet. Christ washed their feet because him being a master showed what a master can be as a servant, and that's what we're supposed to be. So these are the things that they omitted from the Bible, and we'll see why. This is another, uh, I have the sources here for it. It says, many enslaved people who did become Christians had to deal with restrictions by masters that forbade them from attending church or prayer meetings. To get around these restrictions and for alternatives to sermons by white clergy asking them to obey many Christians and slave people held secret services with distinct styles of praying, singing, and worship, which is what the black church became today. Even if you look at a black church and a white church, the way that they worship or practice in a white church is very different than a black church, but we had to go high. And it said in nearby woods and gullies and ravines and thickets, you can get this from the invisible institution. 
Historians say the biblical story of the Israelites escape from Egypt. And I want y'all to pay attention because if the, the inspiration is what's happening to the children of Israel, then the enemy has to be whoever is oppressing the children of Israel, which is the Egyptians. Historians say the biblical story of the Israelites escape from Egypt provided a good deal of inspiration to the enslaved people. This was reflected in coded lyrics to some of their religious songs or spirituals. That's why y'all would hear them old Negro spirituals, wade in the water, uh, uh, swing low, swing chariot. All of that would be the coded lyrics that the black people at that time would uh, sing, would encourage. It would be uh, slave routes, excuse me, escape slave routes. All of those things would play a part. It says in Go Down Moses, for example, the lyrics plead with the Hebrew prophet to tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Frederick Douglass wrote that when he was a child before he had escaped slavery. A keen observer might have detected in our repeated singing of O Canaan, sweet Canaan, I am bound for the land of Canaan. Canaan, of course, is what will become the land of Israel. I'll go to the next slide. Prophet William Crowdy. Listen, man, Crowdy, Crowdy would be like an honorary UPK member if you look at the story. So Crowdy was born William Guthrie in Oklahoma on Tuesday, on Tuesday, September 13th. I'm sorry, Wild in Guthrie, Oklahoma on Tuesday, September 13th. The Lord God appeared unto William Crowdy. It's, it's going to be amazing how all of these men that was inspired all got a vision of some kind from an actual real God, not whatever God y'all follow. It says, telling him that he wanted him to redeem Israel out of spiritual and mental bondage. It didn't say he wanted to redeem Africans or any other type of people. It says specifically redeem Israel. In 1896, the Crowdies moved to Lawrence, Kansas, and the prophet began preaching the word of God. At first on street corners, he organized the first tabernacle and Emporia at the second at Lawrence. As he strove to reestablish this doctrine and gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is Matthews 10 and 6, let's see where he went. He met with much opposition from some of the listeners and from some of the civil authorities. That's why I say he would be an honorary UPK member, because we get the same opposition. We get the same opposition every time we go out there, whether it be the listeners all the civil authorities that don't want us to do it. And where did he do it? While preaching on the street, he was arrested 22 times. However, he continued his mission, which he had been sent. That's what the God of the Bible does. When you serve in the God of that Bible, you get inspired, whether you go to jail, whether you get harm, whether there's danger, whether there's anything involved in it, that's what you do. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Next slide. Because of the great prophet success, oh, to what I appreciate. Because of the great prophet success, jealousy began to swell up among many prominent clergymen of persuasions. He was accused of anarchy, preaching false doctrine. In February 16, 1902, the Philadelphia Day Press <clears throat> detailed the article telling the people uh, mass meetings held by those ministers and how they declared that this so called Negro prophet must be stopped. Here's was his response. He said, the more they denounce me, the more people pack my services. I came to this city less than a year ago from Texas, and I've taken in over 1,300 converts. That's how I feel like if I use the conscious community as an example, Sinetta's House of Consciousness. When we come over there and they denounce us, we still kept growing. No matter what they said, no matter how much they try to stop us, we still kept going. It says they are jealous of my success. I teach my people. Here's what he's here's what they're jealous of. I teach my people to love one another, keep the commandments, pay their honest debts, abstain from alcohol and tobacco. If that's anarchy and false doctrine, I am willing to take a back seat. Mayor Ashford has seen my work and he finds no offense in me. I almost experienced that when we was in North Carolina, which we'll get to later in this um, debate. In North Carolina, they try to say the same thing, that we are radical, that we're killers, and we're doing that. When all we're doing is keeping our culture, all of them people that you see in ISUBK, keep the commandments, abstain from tobacco. Alcohol is not unlawful, but we do advise if you have an alcoholic problem not to drink it, and we don't follow false doctrine or do anything like that. 
It says scholars say predominantly black churches of the 19th and 20th centuries played important roles in black society outside the sphere of religion. In a period where discrimination barred black people from access to various public amenities, many black churches offered job training programs. Why are the black churches doing that? Because they have that Bible, because they have that book. Zephaniah 2 and 1 says, gather yourself together, O nation not desired. So when we was not desired, we desired ourselves, which is what makes the early church such a nostalgic moment in time for me. Like the early church, uh, segregation, all of that is nostalgia because it forced us to be more spiritual, to be more moral, to be more ethical. And once we began to do that, it says many black churches offer job training, insurance cooperated, excuse me, cooperatives, circulating libraries, and athletic clubs. They were among on, the only places that black people could take public or semi-public leadership positions. Men gained prominence as pastors, while women, when they like to say we don't rock with the women, while women often led church committees and organizations that provided social services locally or advocated for causes. And that's the balance that the men and women would have back then. And that's the balance we have in ISBK today. In the late 18th, I think I might have read, I'm, I'll read this one again. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, thousands of Americans, Black, enslaved, and free were swept up in the revival known as the Second Great Awakening, which we're about to get into. It says in the South, the religious fervor of the evangelical Christianity resonated easily with the emotive religious traditions brought from West Africa. Rob Bourne will like that part. I left that in there for you. Forging a unique synthesis, slaves gathered in hush harbors, woods and gullies, ravers and thickets for heartfelt worship which stressed deliverance from the toil and troubles of the present world and salvation of early life to come. Let me keep going. Most of the enslaved lay outside of the institutional church on purpose. They laid outside of the institutional church because when you go in the church, you'll be what they call institutionalized. In the 1830s and 1840s, Southern churchmen undertook an active campaign to persuade plantation owners that slaves must be bought into the Christian fold. Now, in one part, they come in outside of the institutional church. In the other part, they want to bring them into the Christian fold for control. This meant that the church that had to be carried to the plantation, aided by denominational missionary societies, association, plantation missions became popular institutions. But missionaries recognized that Christianity would not appeal to all enslaved blacks. This is what they said. He who carries the gospel to them delivers deism, skepticism, universalism, all the strong objections against Christianity. Objections were considered peculiar to white Christians who were preaching obedience to your masters because they knew if they were delivering their type of uh, Christianity, it wouldn't be something that we would follow. I think I want to skip this one and come back. This is Henry Highland Garnet. This is the National Negro Convention of 1843 was held in Buffalo, New York, drawing some 70 delegates, a dozen states. Among the delegates were young rising leaders in the African community. Frederick Douglass, William H. Brown. Charles 30 seconds, 30 seconds. 27. This is what Henry Highland said in his address. He said, brethren, I'm sorry. What Henry Highland said was that slaves of the United States were calling for their open rebellion. And that speech only failed by one vote. So even during back then, he said, brethren, arise, arise, strike for your lives and liberty. Now is the day and the hour. Let every slave throughout the land do this. And he was a preacher. He was a preacher using that Bible for his liberation. What I've shown in my first half, which I'll continue to show, is that that Bible has been the only liberation for black people in America. I yield. All right, peace and love. You did 15 minutes and 25 seconds. I'm going to give my brother Shaka almost the same amount of time. And before Shaka goes in, let me mute everybody up. All right, the only person who should be off mute is my brother Shaka. You're going to have to unmute yourself again, my brother, because I just muted everybody. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please keep your microphone muted. Keep your cameras off. Enjoy the, the information. Take, get your pen and paper and take notes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my big brother, Shaka Amos. I'll start the time when you tell me that you're ready, my brother. 
You got to unmute your mic, um, Brother Shaka. Okay, I'm unmuted. I had to find my uh, screen. Uh, these things jump around. Okay. So um, uh, I'll address his statements at the end. Uh, can, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, are we starting right now? Like, do I get a go? You tell me once you start, I'll, I'll st start the clock, my brother. Okay, not a problem. Uh, so that's, um, oh, let me take this out my ear because I don't need it. All right. So that's, uh, let me make sure I can share my screen so I can make sure everything is on. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. Share your screen. Share your screen. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm guessing you guys can see this, right? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Let me put this up top. Oh, shit. I hate when, forgive me, guys. Zoom is just kind of screwing me up here a bit. All right. Um, let me do this again. One second, guys. Zoom screwed me, so you got to give me a second. Take, it, take your time, brother. It's all good. All right. Clock ain't okay. start yet. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, remember to keep yourselves on mute. Turn your cameras off if you have any audio issues. Make sure you um, come out and try to sign in under the um, the Wi-Fi for audio or the other one. All right. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, you know the little. This is why I hate Zoom. You know the little thing that um, when you're sharing your screen and you can still see the Zoom controls on your screen. Is there a way you can make that hide because it's blocking um, things that I need to see? Um. Anybody? The thing, anybody? The thing Rob on. Move it to the side, Shaka. You see that little thing? Just touch it and move it. Move it across. I don't see nothing now but your screen now, though. Yeah, your I know. Is... I know, but I can see it. So it's like... Oh, I, I just, yeah, well, you it, see your, your picture, right? Yeah, yeah. I could see the... um, I could see the uh, uh, the all of the controls and everything, you know. You just got to press on it and move it. That's all. Just press on it and move it, move it to the side. Yeah. You move it up. All right. But even... Oh, man. Okay. All right, so now nah, this is not doing it. all right. So whatever, man, I'll just leave it right here. I'll just deal with it. All right, let me know when you want to start, and I'll start the okay. clock, my brother. Other right. thing you could do is expand your screen, and then it, 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 it'll take up the whole screen, and it won't see no controls. Yeah, I, my my screen is expanded fully. Oh, oh shit! I don't know. Then. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, either way. You know, the, you know the button at the top that says the green, the yellow, and the and the red? Press the green button and expand the screen. I know that. that. Oh, come on, man. I spent too much time online not to know that. That's not the no, issue. I'm just yet. saying, that's what he's saying, to expand the screen. screen because if you do Yeah, it, I know. It's already, it's, but I'm saying it's, it's already expanded. So. No, right. if, it, if it was expanded, it would have expanded here on my screen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It would expand on everybody's screen, beloved. Well, I thought it would. Well, hold on. Let me do it again. Cause I know I expanded it. So Cause I'm once gonna... you once you once you go once you just took off your your, your sharing um you stop sharing. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing again so I can get this right. Okay. Right. So one second. Hey Garfield, everybody could get in, right? I got a few texts that some people said they couldn't get in. Everybody got in, brother. If they if they have the link, I'm right here. So I mean, we have we have. Hold on. And to be. Um, You're talking about the ones that didn't pay to Zaria. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they pay, they pay. <laughs> hey, shout out to Kim Zealand in the building, by the way, from Clubhouse. Shout out to Kim Zealand. I got to give her a quick shout out right there. I see her in the house. I just want to say shout out to Kim Zealand. All right. There you go, Shaka. There you go. You can see it. You just oh, got man. off. It you just got, got off. Back, back, back on. Right back on. I'm putting it right back on. Okay. There you go. Right, there it is. Okay. Man, this is... Let's get it. One second. This is why I hate Zoom. Zoom sucks. One second. Because it's still not fully expanded. Now now it's fully expanded. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, yeah. Because you, you got to expand it twice. You got to expand it on the screen thing, and then you got to expand it in, in PowerPoint. So, so you got to expand it twice. All right, let's go. Let's go. Time. We going. We going. We going. All, All right. right. So... Um, whenever you're ready, um, you can start me. Just let me know that you started me. All right. Just remember, you got 15 minutes, Shaka, so you want to, um, do what you do. Don't get started. Right. Yeah, I know. All right, there you go, bro. You can start when you're ready. 
As all right. Start okay. All right. So the first thing that uh, I want to address very quickly is um, Tazoria lied about uh, the title. I have the title right here on the screen. He said that it was called Kemet versus the Bible, right? That's what he said. Now, if it was called Kemet versus the Bible, I'm not supposed to be able to mention the Bible. He's not supposed to be able to talk about Kemet. So why would it be titled? There's the title right in front of you. Remember I told you, even when they try to tell the truth, they lie. Literally everything that comes out of their mouth is a lie. Look at the title. It says, who ancient writings can fix the black community? Whose records are stronger? Saturday, April, da 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 to Zoriak and Shaka Mose. It doesn't say anything about the Bible. It doesn't say anything about Kemet. So that was a lie, L-I-E, all capital letters. And if we were charging money for lies, you would owe me money right now. So we go put that in your lie bank. That's number one, okay? Um, so if you also, if you listen to this conversation, um, two things I want to address and I'm, and I'm going to move forward. Uh, one, his big critique about Kemet is that Kemet was 3,000 years ago and therefore it can't address anything that's modern. I take issue with that because if you were talking about modern, you would not have just kept us in the 18th and 19th century for the past 15 minutes, over 15 minutes. So that's a, that is hypocrisy and a double standard. So you want to say that your out of date shit is better than our, excuse me, your out of date stuff is better than our out of date stuff. This That's basically your argument. Right. Because you literally just kept them. You kept the entire 400 people, or however many people are watching. You literally just kept them in the 18th and 19th century. I don't know if you know this, but right now there is artificial intelligence. None of that existed in the 18th and 19th century. So you were really, really out of sync. OK, I'm hearing somebody's mic. Please mute hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. And stop my time. There you go. I stopped it. It's mine. I just came in. I'm trying to see how this thing works. I'm sorry. All right, somebody mute her, please. All right, there you go. You're good, sis. You're good. All right, go ahead, Shaka. I'll start your time as soon as he starts speaking. Okay, I'm starting to speak now. So again, that was just more of the double speak of Hebrew Israelites. It's always a sleight of hand and tricks and mirrors, okay? And I just showed you that in real time. You could see with your own two eyes what the title is. It's not what he said it was. And you can also bear witness to the fact that he just kept you all in the, in the 18th and 19th century, right? And that's really important. Why is that? Because what it tells you is, if you notice, everything that he said was about what slaves did. Slaves did this. Slaves did that. Slaves this, slaves that. He just spoke to you about 15 minutes about slaves. That's what, that's what he talked about, slaves. So basically, the subtext is he wants to keep you in a slave posture. Do what the slaves did, because that's going to be the solution to your problems. Does that make sense to you, to act as slaves in a free society, in a purported free society? Tell me how that makes sense and how that adds up. That is illogical. That is illogical to use the solutions of slaves within a free society. That makes no sense. It's like, it's, like taking both, it's like taking both of your shoelaces and tying them together and say, I'm gonna go run this race against everybody else who has on, you know, uh, uh, who had their shoes tied properly. It's just more Hebrew idiocy. Now let's move forward. There we go. All right, this is from Columbia University Irving Medical Center, right? So, the, and he also, not only did he keep you in the 18th, 19th century uh, in a slave posture, but the, sub, the other subtext to that is that your problems are essentially spiritual, right? That's the main message, that the, that, the, that the main problem that Black people have is a spiritual problem, right? And so what I'm going to document for you is that the main problem that Black people have is not a spiritual problem, okay? So we're going to deal with that, and then we're going to come, we're going to come back to dealing with the title, because that's very important if I make it. Okay. This is from Columbia University Irving Medical Center. Columbia, Columbia University Department of Psychology. Okay, they published this article. It, it's, it's fairly recent, so I think it's very relevant to what we're talking about, right? Um, addressing mental health in the Black community. The Black community suffers from an increased rate of mental health concerns. You want to know what your problems are? Bingo, there you go. Every time you walk out into your community and you see all kinds of aberrations, you see people walking around begging, um, barely wearing decent clothes, they're out of their minds, they're on methadone, they're on heroin, all over the place. People are be all kinds of stuff, right? Things going on in the family that should, it's all mental illness, all of it. That's ground zero for your problems. It's mental illness. It's not a spiritual problem. It's a psychological one, okay? Let's be very clear on that, all right? So we could take that book and throw it in the garbage, number one. OK, um, the black community suffers from an increased rate of mental health concerns, inc uh, including anxiety and depression. 
the increased incidence of psychological difficulties in the black community. You heard that increased, increased incidence of psychological difficulties. We're talking, this is what ties you up. This is what will keep both of your shoes tied together. Psychological difficulties, not spiritual issues. Get out of the Ten Commandments, the movie's over, okay? The increased incidence of psychological difficulties in the black community is related to the, to the lack of access to appropriate and culturally responsive. Did you hear that? Culturally responsive mental health care. The problem is your part of your mental issues are the cultures that you are subscribing to. They are dysfunctional. You've been in that church how long? He just documented for you how long you've been in that church. And you want to know why you have psych cultural psychological problems? There it is, documented for you in red ink. Okay? They have lack of access to appropriate and culturally responsive mental health care. Right? The church, the Bible is not culturally responsive mental health care. Okay. Um, he also said something about we. What did he say about we? Uh, inspired, inspired, but all of the it ran. It's keeping from traveling. He said something. Yeah, he said something about we and us when it comes to the Bible. Oh, we're keeping our culture. You haven't proved it's our culture, so that so don't 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 start with the with, with the fake argument, right? You failed to prove that. So let's keep let's continue to move. Um, right. So. Um, Lack of uh, culturally responsive mental health care. We suffer uh, what also actually exacerbates this prejudice and racism inherent in the daily environment of black individuals and historical trauma enacted on the black community by what? The medical field, okay? So that means the very people who are supposed to be helping you are actually exacerbating the problem because of the, pre the aforementioned issues, which is racism, um, uh, and the other things, prejudice, uh, uh, a lack of culturally responsive health care, uh, and uh, what else? Historical trauma, right? And uh, uh, moreover, uh, uh, given that uh, given that the black community exists in the intersection of racism, classism, and health inequity, their mental health needs are often what exacerbated and mostly unfulfilled. When you walk out into the streets, my people, and you look around your own communities, it's not a lack of Bible that has people messed up. It's their overall mental health. You notice nothing that he said addressed that. None of it. None of it spoke to mental health. It was just stories about slaves. That's it. So he's like, he's like a spokesperson for Hollywood. You know how every year they come out with a slave movie? 12 Years a Slave, now they got Will Smith, uh, his new slave movie. Before that, it was another slave movie, right? So Tzoriak is the spokesperson for um, slave movies. And they do say Hollywood is full of Jews, right? Hollywood is full of Israelites. Hollywood is full of these people of the Bible, right? So it makes sense that all he wants to do is promote slavery amongst us. That's it. That's all he wants to talk about. The slaves did this. The slaves did that. The slaves did this, this, that, and the third. Okay. Oh, and as far as, the other thing, I also wasn't told we, we were allowed to play video, so the preparation was poor. The other thing is that Khalid Muhammad, he showed you Khalid Muhammad talking when Khalid Muhammad was still in the nation of Islam and when he was in the first grade. He didn't show you Khalid Muhammad when he left and went to the United African Movement and was wearing Ankh and Kente cloth. He didn't show that Khalid Muhammad. So that that first bit of uh, uh, smoke and mirrors, that's disqualified, throw that in the garbage. Um, I don't even need to show a picture of that because everybody has seen Khalid Muhammad with the with the AK-47 and the big fat ankh on his forearm. So if you don't, just go Google it, right? Let's continue. Um, issues, so remember, these mental health needs are often exacerbated and mostly unfulfilled. Think about that, people. The Bible can't solve that. If it had, if the Bible could solve that, we would have been mentally healthy the whole time. He said we were using this in slavery. So we've been using this in slavery. We should have the best mental health if, if, if that's what it can cure. But since it hasn't cured it, and since we are disproportionately representative in the mental health community, in the mental health issue community, then that should tell you, that alone should tell you something. That what's coming out of his mouth is horseshit. Okay, let's continue. Um, issues related, oh, also, issues related to... Um, Economic insecurity. So now it's talking about how your mental health is affecting your finance, right? You can't fix a broke community without finance. You can't do it. Not going to happen. Sorry. Come back to reality, all right? Issues related to economic insecurity, right? And the associated experiences, such as violence and criminal justice. We got gang violence and violence from the police. 
Everybody trying to kill us. Everybody, even female violence against their male partners is on the rise. So it's every. It's think about it. We know what violence. We know we the only community that you walk through where people get shot like it's nothing. And we know we complain about mass shooters and we complain about police, racist police. But you know we was doing it up long before either one of those people came along. You know, getting shot in the black community is like walking to the store to get bread. You know this. So let's stop playing games. Let's stop playing Bible games with each other. All right. So anyway, uh, issues related to economic insecurity and the associated experiences such as violence and criminal injustice further serve to compound the mental health disparities of the black population. Right. Um, research suggests that the adult black community is 20 percent more likely to experience serious mental health problems such as major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. This is what most black men have, whether you know it or not, even the ones that look normal. Additionally, black emerging adults. Now these, this is about, this is documentation on the kind of people we're producing after being in the, oh, I can't mention the church, right? Um, so so this, is, this is what we're producing, okay? This is what we're producing. Um, black emerging adults. Um, ages 18 to 25, also experience high rates of mental health problems and, and lower rates of mental health service utilization compared, look, compared to white emerging adults and older black adults. So you think your number one problem is spiritual when the documentation is telling you you're lagging behind psychologically behind white emerging adults. That means the young people we're producing are lagging behind young white people. And that ain't a Bible issue unless you're a freaking retard, okay? These subs, these um these sobering statistics and they are very uh, uh, sobering suggest that uh, despite efforts to reduce what disparities among race and class in the U.S. inequalities are what increasing. How long have we had the Bible? And everything is on all of this adverse stuff is on the increase. That alone is your clarion call that the Bible is not your answer. Period. Okay. Right. So when you look at this image right here, right? The knuckleheads. The, uh... We, we just can't blow them up. <laughs> hey, yo, can somebody up, please but, mute like her? Said, the more all of us as human beings Yo, get along, somebody mute her. Yeah. Stop my time. And, and sometimes in small talks, people can get along. Forget about all this hatred and stuff. Okay, I'm like, going to hello, sure hello, 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 hello. Hello. Let's Who's get good? along on this planet. But, hey, yo, we, hey, yo, kick that, that nigga out, man. Kick him he's out, out, man. He's out, he's out, he's out. Nah, he's that was the moderator's fault, man. I want my five minutes back. That was going on for damn near five minutes. My brother, I stopped the I stopped the clock. I was muted. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, that him wasn't out, five man. minutes. Get to the topic, Shaka. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, carry on. All it right. As you minutes. can see in this image, this is emblematic of the black community. All you got to do is walk out to one twenty fifth Street or go down in the subway or get on a bus. We know it. we can't even bring our children have anywhere in our communities because this is rampant. This has nothing to do with lack of Bible. Okay. So the number one problem in the black community is character deficit. Pre presents as mental illness. Why am I talking about character deficit? Well, because when you ask the average black person what is character, they're going to have the wrong answer. I'll prove it to you right now. I want all of you to ask yourself, what is character? I'm going to give you three seconds for you to give your own self an answer. Three, two, one. Now, you need to write your answer down on a piece of paper to see if you were wrong or right. So when I show you what it is later, you can determine if I know what I'm talking about or not. What is character? That is the question. All right? Now, we just spoke about mental illness, right? Rampant in the black community. This is the instruction of Aminamope, um, Ancient Egyptian Literature, Volume 2, uh, New Kingdom, uh, Dr. Marion Licktime, right? Forgive me, I'm just checking my time. Okay. Oh, shit. All right. So anyway, this is what it says. This is in the introduction to the instruction of Aminamope from Ancient Egyptian Literature, second millennium BCE. With this long work, the genre instruction, they're talking about a specific genre of literature, instruction in, in Egypt reaches its culmination. Its worth lies not in any thematic richness, for its range is much narrower than, for example, that of the instruction of Tahotep. Its worth lies in what? The quality of inwardness. Where does mental illness take place? Inwardness, inside your mind. That's what it's addressing. It says, and it proves it right here, the next sentence, though it is still assumed that right thinking and right action will find their reward. The rest of the sentence is irrelevant. What is the literature, reset? what is this literature addressing? Right thinking and right action. Mental health. You got, two, you got two minutes left, bro. Thank you. Mental health. 
This is the answer to your problem. Right thinking and right action. Not all of this slave crap, okay? Mental illness equals what? Systemic wrong thinking and wrong actions. If mental illness is systemic wrong thinking and wrong actions, and this literature is the adverse opposite, the exact reverse of that, which is right thinking and right action, there is no question as where your salvation lies, unless you are culturally and historically illiterate. And I'm not asking you to assume a slave posture. Mental illness versus right thinking and right action. Wrong thing, mental illness is wrong thinking and harmful behavior. Here it is right here. This literature addresses right thinking and right action. I just documented it for you. That is a fact. That is not an opinion or a perspective. The Bible does not address that. And if it does, it didn't explicitly say so. He damn sure didn't present it. Now, oh, so yeah, I'll be addressing this. I'll continue, but I'm be addressing this coming up. Whose ancient writings can fix the black community? The title, I didn't choose the title. He said himself in his own words, it was his fault. So we're gonna address the problem with that title because until you fix, until you, pardon the pun, fix that title, you will not be able to solve our problems. I always say, if you ask a poor question, you deserve a poor answer. That was a poor question, but it was only asked by somebody without knowledge because they didn't know how to ask the right question. That's what we're gonna be looking at moving forward. Okay, and I'll just continue until I stop. Fix, mend or repair, right? Restore order or tidiness, especially to ones here, clothes and makeup. That's a weak definition. M fix versus restore. What does restore mean? Bring back a previous right practice, custom, or situation. Reinstate, return someone or something to a former condition, place, or position. Repair, renovate a building. Buildings matter. Pay attention because you're going to see something later about buildings, right? Work of art, building the human beings in Egypt, right? So as to return to its what? Original condition. He wasn't talking about none of that. Okay? Restore, give something previously stolen, taken away or lost, your language, your culture, your mores, back to the original owner or recipient. We shouldn't be talking about fixing the black community. It should be talking about restoring. So you had your question wrong. I didn't title the debate, you did. And you were misleading everybody by doing that because you're not an intelligent person. Now. All right, time, time, brother. Boom. Time. All right, you could unshare your screen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, please do not get off your microphone no matter how emotional it is, whichever side you're on, just take notes and respect the platform. All right. Um, I want to say first and foremost, again, thank you, um, Brother Shaka, for that presentation a while ago, that first 15 minutes. Now, there, here comes the second round from Captain Tazaria. When you are, when you, once you start speaking and you tell me you're ready, my brother, I will tick the clock off. All right. So those, um, and by the way, for the, those two people that's in the waiting room that this has been disrupting the debate the whole night, you could email me in the morning for a copy of the debate. All right. Um, all right, here we go. All right. All right, now your turn, I'm Captain Tazariak. Hey, Garfield, I got two shares. Uh, I just wanna share a photo. Uh, Cause this nigga wasted all that time talking. I see why he need. I think he needed an hour. Um, but I want to share. I want to share twice. I want to share a photo, and then I want to get to my PowerPoint. So I'm going to share that first. All right. So I'm going to share this my screen because he like calling me a liar. I don't know why he do that. This nigga's a liar. He said I can't talk. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. Ready. Let's go. So he made a point to say I can't mention the word Bible and Kimmy. Why am I talking about that? This nigga got an old photo. Because remember, I'm the one came up with the title. So look at this screen right here. It's on my Facebook page. If y'all need to see the date, whose ancient writings can fix the black community? Whose records are stronger? Captain can only use the Bible. So he can't say I can't mention the Bible. Maybe, Shaka, you might want to, I don't know what type of service you got, but get you a better phone or photo. But don't stop calling me a liar when I'm not. Captain can only use the Bible. Shaka can only use comedic records. That's it. So I didn't lie. I told the truth, so I'm gonna stop this share and I'm gonna continue to talk about these slaves he don't wanna talk about. And I'm gonna tell you why, wait, wait, let me pause. I'm not gonna say anything until I share, till I get back in here, all right? Um, so let me go back to my screen share. Let me share screen again. Let me go here, boom, boom. And then he complained about me not working. It took him 12 minutes to figure out the shit he was trying to do. So I know you can see my screen. So let me go from current slide. Let me do from current slide. You can see it and you can see the whole screen of it now, right? Yes, sir. 
All right, I appreciate it. I'll go from here. This man spent all his time to pull out one verse from Miriam Litcham. Look like her her words, not even uh, Amina Pope's words from Miriam Litcham about mental illness, which mental illness is something that plagues black people. That's why I'm showing you this timeline. When I get finished this timeline, don't worry, we'll see that the Bible has long been the threshold of fixing. And it's only because we left that. That mental oppression that he's showing in 2023, if we would have kept that Bible the way these men I'm going to read about kept it, we wouldn't have that mental oppression. So I'm going to keep going. This was Henry Highland. I want to highlight this brother again. It says he was a 27-year-old Henry Highland Garner, a newspaper editor and pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Troy, New York. However, captured most of the attention of the delegates with an address to the slaves of the United States in which he called for their open rebellion. The speech failed by one vote of being endorsed by the convention. If that speech would have happened, it would have been a sanctioned rebellion. This was his quote, brethren, arise, arise, strike for your lives and liberties. Now is the day and the hour. Let every slave throughout the land do this. And the days of slavery are numbered. That's the inspiration that he had. He keeps saying, why do I ask? What, why am I referencing the Bible? Why am I talking about the past? Romans 15 and 4 says, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning, that through paces and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. The only thing we have is our records. Is it not him using comedic records, me using biblical records? We're using stuff of old. So I'm showing history and how we use that history to build ourselves up. And then the failure of black people not wanting to stand with those rebels, not wanting to stand with those militant men and women that was about the rise and strength of black people. It said, you cannot be more oppressed than you have been. You cannot suffer greater cruelties than you already have. That's a camp speaking. That's the same. Henry Highland will be captain such and such in ISBK with that speech right there. I'm gonna keep going. During the 1770s and 80s, black ministers began to preach their own people drawn on stories and events depicted from the Old and New Testament. They wasn't depicting from nothing else. No story spoke more powerful than the story of Exodus. Like, movies inspired. I remember when Panther came out, all y'all niggas was Wakanda forever. Y'all doing this shit here? Y'all doing all that. Because visuals and stories are inspiring but there ain't never been nothing more inspiring than the Bible. Exodus, as an example, with themes of bondage and liberation brought out by a righteous and powerful God who would one day set them free. A few black preachers in the South succeeded in establishing independent black churches. One of them was Andrew Bryan. A white, the white community did not like that there was a lot of African-American people gathering for his services. The slave masters, did not want slave listening to Brian, just like our oppressor don't want them listening to us today. They, God forbid we stop selling drugs, which I'm gonna address. God forbid we stop being homosexual, we stop aborting babies, we stop tearing up the black family, which I'm gonna show how the Bible fixes all of that. God forbid we stop doing that. And they didn't like it back then. It says, because they believe he was plotting the rebellion, the slaves did not attend the services, were whipped, excuse me, the slaves that did were whipped, shackled, hanged, beat, and imprisoned. It didn't stop him, though. Brian was accused of plotting a rebellion and was thrown in jail, but he won the case. When he went, uh, or when the case was analyzed by the Justice of Inferior Court, it resulted in Brian and Samson being found innocent. That's why I have Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time that now is high time to wake up out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we ever believed. I'll go to the next slide. David Walker, another brother, David Walker wrote a whole article to the damn Supreme Court. And he said, Walker found oppression of fellow blacks unbearable. If I remain in this bloody land, he later recalled thinking I would not live long. He was only in his 20s either. He was a young man that saw the oppression of black people. And he was a pastor too. It says, how much? Come and I cannot remain where I must hear slaves chains continually and where I must encounter insults of their hypocritical enslavers. Consequently, as a young adult, he moved to Charleston, South Carolina, a mecca for upwardly mobile free blacks. He became affiliated with the strong African Methodist Episcopal Church. Them church I said that was founded, you ain't gonna find no Kemet churches nowhere, but you're gonna find the Episcopal Church with the activists and the members. And once he got that, this is what he wrote. 
It says, our wretchedness in consequence of the preachers of the religion of Jesus Christ. Religion, my brethren, is a substance of deep consideration among all nations of the earth. The pagans have a kind, as well as the Mohammedans, the Jews, and the Christians. But pure, undefiled religion, such as was preached by Jesus Christ, Yahweh Mashiach, and his apostles, is hard to be found in all the earth. That's where he's drawn from. It's not mental to be spiritual. It's mental to not have no spirit because when you what you yield your spirit to is what you yield your morality to. You look at America, you look at blacks yielding their spirit to America. That's why we don't have no morality. When you yield it to that Bible, like he's talking about, now you instantly have to have a morality if you're following it. It says God through the instrument of Moses. Again, we talk about Moses. And again, if they talk about Moses, Egypt has to be the enemy handed a dispensation of his divine will to the children of Israel after they left Egypt. He then by his apostles handed a dispensation, dispensation of his together with the will of Christ to the European and Europe who in open violation of which have made merchandise of us. Now he's calling them out on using the Bible to make merchandise of us which is also in the Bible. First Peter's two and three tells you that they will make merchandise of us. I'm going to go to the next slide. This other David Walker's quotes. David Walker's appeal, arguably the most radical of all anti-slavery documents, caused a great stir when it was published in September of 1829 and called for slaves to revolt against their masters. David Walker, a free black, originally wrote from the South, they want us for their slaves and think nothing of murdering us. Therefore, if there is an attempt made by us kill or be killed. These are the type of men we had back then that was inspired by the Bible. And that's why I'm going through this historical timeline because there came a time where it stopped. I'm going to go to the next slide. Oh, Nat Turner. Nat Turner is another brother, probably the most famous. Y'all probably don't know the Georges and the David Walkers that I've mentioned, but you know Nat Turner. Nat Turner's sources from the time of the revolt referred to Nat Turner as a preacher. And Nat Turner thought of himself as a man of God, perhaps even as a prophet chosen by God. So some of the scriptures that he have, I have as a quote, it says, having arrived to the man's estate and hearing scriptures commented on meetings. I was struck with that particular passage which says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added to you. A lot of people think the Israelites are just sitting on our hands, not doing nothing. The kingdom of heaven is within you. It says, as I was praying one day at my plow, the spirit spoke to me saying, seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you, Luke 12 and 31. About this time I also had a vision. I saw white spirits and black spirits engaged in battle. Again, another slave, another revolutionary man getting a vision from the most high, the God of this book. And it says the thunder rolled in the heavens and the blood flowed in the streams. And I heard a voice saying, such is your luck, such are you called to see. And let it come rough or smooth, you must surely bear it. That's Isaiah 40 and 4, Luke 3 and 5. And the Holy Spirit was with me and said, Behold me as I stand in the heavens. And look, I saw the forms of men in different attitudes. That's Isaiah the 65th chapter. It was plain to me that the Savior was about to lay down a yoke he had borne for the sins of men. And the great day of judgment was at hand. That's Matthews 11 and 20. That's Bible verses. On the 12th of, no, I'll go to the next slide, so I can. This is what W.E.B. Du Bois wrote about those same free men, which I'm a free man. I can talk the way I talk because they was free back then, just like I'm free to speak what I say now. This is what W.E.B. Du Bois wrote. It says, we often neglect the influence of the freed man before the war because of the paucity of his numbers and the small weight he had in the history of the nation because history would not uplift what they would call the rebels. America is never going to glorify the rebels. They'll glorify like a Martin Luther King. He wasn't a rebel, but they wouldn't glorify Malcolm or Nat or Kalim. They won't glorify or Commander General. They won't glorify them. We must not forget that his chief influence was internal. That same internal shit Shaka was talking about, where he just wouldn't be about wisdom. The influence that was internal for them was exerted on the black world, meaning they went and did something about it. And that there he was the ethical and social leader. I want him to show, this is Shaka, where they used any of his records to be an ethical and social leader because I'm showing it. 
I'm showing in this debate that whether it was from back then or when we get to 2023, we use that Bible to be ethical and social leaders. The masses of the freed men sank into poverty and listlessness, but not all of them. The free Negro leader arose and his chief characteristic was intense and earnestness and deep feeling on the slavery question. They get mad when they say, all y'all doing is yelling on the street because y'all don't know what it means to be intense, to be angry. Like we just read about David Walker. He said he can't bear to listen or hear the chains of slavery. That's how we feel today. When we see our brothers and sisters destroyed the way that they destroyed, we can't bear to hear it. And we get instilled in us the influence to be an ethical and social leader. That's the pattern I'm showing. Freedom became a real thing to him and not a dream. His religion became more darker and intense. So he wasn't the step and fetch it type of Christian. And into his ethics crept a note of revenge and into his songs a day of reckoning at hand. The coming of the Lord swept this side of death and came to be a thing to be hoped for in a day. Through fugitive slaves and irrepressible disgust and this desire for freedom seized the black millions still in bondage. That's what the Bible inspired. That's what we inspire every day. Now, let me not talk about Marcus Garvey. You're red, black, and green. That was a brother that believed in the Bible. Three now, minutes, three minutes, so three when minutes. You put that red, black, and green up. Just remember Marcus Garvey. This is what Marcus Garvey said. Considering the strong political and economical black nationalism of Garvey's movement, it seems odd to include an essay on his website on religion in America. Garvey himself claimed that his Declaration of Rights of the Negro peoples of the world, along with the Bible, served as the holy writ for our Negro race. He stated very clearly that as we pray to the almighty God, not Ra, as we pray to the almighty God to save us through his holy words, so shall we with confidence in ourselves follow the sentiment of the Declaration of Rights and carve our way to liberty. For Garvey, it was no less than the will of God for black people to be free, to determine their own destination. His organization and his motto, One God, One Aim, he took from Psalms 68 and 31. When it say, princes shall come out of Egypt. Why is it saying princes shall come out of Egypt? I have the scriptures right here. Isaiah 27 and 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off the channel of the river of the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. Marcus Garvey's influence was the Bible. Isaiah 27 and 13, and this shall come to pass in that day, that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt. It's not that deep. What I have here, how much time I got? It says, princes shall- One, one and a half minute, my brother. One and a half minutes. I'll skip this one. This is just talking more about Marcus Garvey. This is the Black Convention. Now we're getting into some shit now. The Black Convention movement in Black politics in 19th century America. If I don't finish it on this slide, this is where I'll pick up on the next slide. African-American leaders throughout the 19th century recognized the significance, me, significance of creating and sustaining national organizations that was built upon local political networks. Central to this was the Black Convention movement. A survey of many local, state, national black conventions from the 1830s to the 1890s reveal exactly how African Americans sought to defend their rights as American citizens in the public sphere. These conventions were part of a broader political environment of mass meetings, whether formal conventions or community meetings in the local black churches that provided necessary space through which the black popular politics could operate in the 19th century America. First organized by free African-Americans in 1830, conventions met periodically throughout the 19th century. The early meetings focused primarily on the abolition of slavery. However, 10 seconds, I'm gonna stop right here. I'll, I'll yield those 10 seconds, Garfield. I'll stop here. All right, thank you, my brother. Let me stop the time. Let me get my brother Shaka Amos in the building so he could do what he needs to do. You can share your screen, brother, make sure everything is good, and I'll start as soon as you start speaking. All right, peace and love, family. Make sure you keep your mics muted, muted. Turn your videos off, stop video. The only person's video I should be seeing, well, two people is Captain Tazariak and brother Shaka Amos. All right, so Shaka, when you're ready, you could share, and um, I'll make sure that everything is right before I start the time. You have 50 minutes. This is your round two. 
Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Hey, brother, hold on, hold on one second. Brother Denzel Brown, I don't know if you just got in, but you got to mute your mic and you got to turn off your camera, beloved. All right. That's your first warning. The second one, I'm going to have to kick you out. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It's off. I'll turn you. <laughs> oh, man. I, don't worry about it, brother. I'll turn your camera off for you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Uh, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me make sure this clock is fine. All right. As soon as you're ready, as soon as you start speaking. Okay. Uh, All right. I just want to make sure that uh, you guys can see. Is my screen full? It's um, not full. No, it's not full. All right. Hold on one second. Yeah, the reason I take issue with Zoom is because I use better material, <laughs> I use better software. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm trying to quit. This thing won't let me quit. Um, what the, hold on a second. Stop sharing. Okay. All right. Now it's letting me quit. Um, so, uh, so you can't do both. It's not going to let me do both. That's really strange. I can do this, but I can't hit, I can hit slide here. Um, play from current slide. Okay, I could do it from there. All right, cool. That's not a problem. Play from current slide. Um, okay, uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I know what the issue is. Give me one second. Okay, that's there. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, okay. Um, all right, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right, so the first thing, I'm going to start talking right now. The first thing I'm not going to let him do is lie and hide behind the Bible because that's what these Hebrew Israelites have been doing since forever. He says he wants me to show and prove that they used comedic writing during slavery and that I can't show that. This is the reason he didn't want me to go into the Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm documenting for you Thank right you. here where it says, right here. The editor of Proverbs 22, 17, 22, 24, 22, received and adopted the wisdom of Amenemot. Okay? So therefore, all of these Bible people that you were talking about during slavery, when they were reading the Bible, they were reading comedic literature. That's a fact and it's documented. This editor had access to all or almost all of the book of Amenemope. Okay, it is in Proverbs. You can't change that. Nothing can change that. These are the things you want to hide. That's why you tried to restrict me during this debate. Hold on, 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 hold on one second. Let me pause the time. Excuse me, um, what happened to Zariak? He just broke the rules. No, I didn't break no rules. You, I'm answering your question. You wanted me to show comedic literature being used during slavery. I just did it. You don't want people to know it's in the Bible. I didn't break any rules. I use, I'm talking about comedic literature. Rules of the debate is I can't talk about Kemet. You can't talk about the Bible. But you did talk about Kemet when you said they didn't use didn't comedic literature. No, you did talk about no Kemet. Comedic, I didn't pull up no. You comedic. did talk about comedic literature. When you it's said not, they did not use comedic literature, about, you, spoke, not, you spoke about Kemet. All right, let me, you, let me take over. Let me take over. No, you're not getting you, away with hold, that, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on one second. Everybody stop, stop. Now, the rule is, the flyer, the flyer says, you got to use the, 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 um, the comedic literature. And That's what I'm talking use, about, comedic literature. All I'm right. talking about comedic literature. All right, hold on, hold on, else. real quick. He is not, you, he's talking about comedic literature. I'm talking about comedic literature. Captain, Captain used the word commit. That's Shaka right. have a right to use the like word. Nobody Bible. said you can't use the word. No, he's saying that the Bible copy. This is not a plagiarism debate. I'm not talking about plagiarism. I'm talking about comedic literature. That's you what you said. Said. You you that's your problem. The, you and, Captain, your and Captain, you can't do that when he's that's speaking. That's what he's trying though. to do. You should, you should wait till his lecture is over broken. and then you I, can I, talk. Listen, I tell you what, he can do whatever he want. I just wanted to interrupt and let it know he's breaking the rules. No, I'm not the, breaking any rules. You, you broke are. the rules. Hey, I'm you not breaking it. any rules. You I'm talking it, about brother. comedic literature. Do your thing, brother. Do your I'm thing. I'm talking about comedic it, literature. I knew this was all you could do. I'm talking so about do comedic think? literature. If right, all you can do on, is plagiarize, get it back. Ask about comedic literature. Hey, 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 hey. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, 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 time out. Time out, time out, time out. Captain, you made your point. Mute your mic. I just wanted to expose the fool. I'm done. I'm muted. All right, cool. Mute yourself. 
Mute yourself. There you go. All right. All right. Get his Not, time so, right, Garfield. Again. Start his time over, Garfield, because he got it. You can't yeah, make he good, it. He good. He good. He good. Give him his full fifteen minutes back. He could back the slide up. I just wanted to show the food. That's all. Yeah. All okay. right. Cool. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead. You ready? You ready, Shaka? Yeah. All See, right. go ahead. We got a saying in the old school. You got to cheat me to beat me. You can't beat me fair and square. You want to pretend that people are standing on your work when you are actually standing on our work. That's dishonest and deceitful. That's the only thing Hebrew Israelites have to offer anybody. You got the nerve to ask me what comedic literature did they use? And then when I put out the documentation to show you that they used our literature that is documented and it's in the same book that these slaves used to be inspired and get free. So they were using the comedic literature. I'm not gonna let you hide behind a lie. I don't give a fuck about nothing. Are you kidding me? You gotta be out of your Hebrew mind. Not just Proverbs, Psalms. Jewish and Christian approaches to Psalms. Conclusions. Psalm 104 is indeed dependent on Akhenaten's hymn to the sun. So they use the comedic literature. Parallels between Psalm 104 and 2030 and Akhenaten hymn in virtuality identical order in its essay. It will be argued that Psalm 104 is indeed dependent on Akhenaten's hymn to the sun. Rather than showing dependence on later Amin Ray hymns, it is very much looks at the author, it very much looks as if the author of Psalm 104 did indeed have access to Akhenaten's hymn to the sun. So stop lying and selling the illusion and the movie, the Ten Commandment movies, that it was some Hebrew literature that was the slaves were reading when they were actually reading and being inspired by comedic literature. You lost that. Live with it for the rest of your Hebrew life. Live with it. You gotta be out your mind till you're gonna tie both of my hands behind my back and have a lion debate. That's not a debate, that's a setup. And you're not gonna set me up, you're not gonna set up the audience, and you're not gonna set up the literature. You've been doing it for 2,000 years. And you want to come here and do that tonight? No, it's not happening. You gotta be out your mind. You gotta be literally insane. It tells me everything I need to know about your character. You gotta be mentally ill. That's what you gotta be. Mentally ill. Now I have a question for y'all. Um, Garfield, as the moderator. You know your screen is not sharing, Shaka. So the stuff that I just read, was it sharing on the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. All right, hold on one second. Let me, Let me stop, stop your time. Let me stop your time. All Thank right. you. Stop my time, please. I'm going back to my other um, debate, my other um, presentation. I got it. Oh, um, all right. Do this. That way I can get full screen. No, full screen. I'm just trying to get it full screen again. Um, and say, why you got to cheat me to beat me? If you could, you should be able to beat me fair and square. You want to be a boxer and put iron rings in your gloves while the other guy's fighting with regular gloves. Huh, come on, man. You want somebody else to play fair while you don't play fair. That ain't fair. If you're going to beat me, beat me fair and square. Don't lie. Hold on, man. I didn't put, let me close that other one because I don't want it to go. I don't, this is not what I'm trying to show. I dealt with that. This is what I'm trying to show. All right, stop share. Let me make sure that you have to see my screen. Please hold my time for it one second. I just want to make sure that I have everybody set up to see the screen. Okay. Um, I'm going to say I, I broke the rules. I didn't break any rules. You broke the rules when you mentioned Kemet. They didn't read Kemetic literature. I, that's a lie. That's a lie. I'm just trying to get this. So you know what? I'll just show it without the thing in full. Um, whatever. Take table picture screenshot. This should, here we go. Slideshow. This is what I'm looking for. Slideshow. Play from current slide. All right. I'll let you know when I'm ready to go. Okay. Uh, I'm ready to go. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, all right, I'm ready to go. Whenever you're ready. All right, go ahead, brother. brother. It's all okay. You. All right. I already showed you that the problem was with the title. Now, you might not see some of the literature that I'm going to show later on, but I have to deal with this for you to be able to understand it. It doesn't make sense if I show you something that you don't understand it. The word fix is wrong. You're taking a wrong approach to the problem. You can't, fixing something that's broken, broke, it's, what's the point of fixing it? It's broke, broke. You fix something when it could still be repaired, but when it's broken, it's broken, right? Restore. I already read the definition of restore, right? Now we're going to go to community. Community is the wrong word. A group of people living in the same place or having a particular char characteristic in common. Right. Um. This is the lesser definition. Right. This is less than. 
right? The people of a district or country considered collectively, especially in the context of social values and responsibilities, society. Now, that it, but they use society as an afterthought. The word you want to go for is society. You want to use restore society, right? Because you have to know the difference between a community and a society. He doesn't, okay? The aggregate of people living together in a more or less ordered society. Not anything could be a society. You can have, a, I mean, anything could be a community. You can have a community in a psych ward in a hospital. You can have a community in prison and in, in jail, community of inmates. You got all of these things. LBGDQ is a community, right? That doesn't make any of these things society. You have to know the difference between the two. The community of people living in a particular country or region are having shared custom laws and organizations, a specified section, fashionably wealthy and influential. That means having wealth, right? A distinct group in a community, okay? Continue. This is the word I want you to remember. The word is not community. The word is kadu. The word is, this is the root word you will need to remember through the rest of my presentation. Ked. Remember this word, ked. We don't need a hundred books. Kimmy didn't need a hundred books. They only needed one word, head. It means society, all right? Kemet means the black settlement or town. We always lean toward the greater definition. So it's not vicinity or black settlement. It's, it's society, black town, right? And the word you want to look for is shirud, which means strengthen, maintain, perpetuate, flourish, or restore. And it's in reference to buildings, but not just buildings. So the word you want to look for, right? Here we know it's town. Just this from Middle Egyptian, that the newt symbol is for town. There it is right there, town. Why is town important? Town is important because of this. A, a community does not have this. A town is a municipality. What is a municipality? A town, a city or town that has corporate status. What are you restoring Black people to? You're not telling us what status you're re 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 restoring us to. You're not even talking about restoring. You're talking about fixing. It's about restoring a city or town that has corporate status. This is something that's worth restoring, right? Settlement you don't use because it's what? Community, community doesn't tell you anything, right? This is ignorance talking. Municipality, town, corporate. This is from, um, I can't see the title because this thing is blocking me. Oh, kinship and family in ancient Egypt, archeology span and anthropology and dialogue. The six attributes that the primary sources reveal for kin groups in ancient Egypt are that they all live in the same household or area. They are displayed and commemorated together on monuments, right? And what is, okay, and they can function as and economic units or corporate groups. So when you're talking about restoring something, right? You're talking about restoring a society. I and mean, you talk about what kind, you're talking about a, a town, right? Not, not a community or not a settlement. You're talking about a town. Why? Because that's corporate status. You have to know what you're talking about, okay? You're not qualified. You're reading slave stories. Every other word out your mouth was still slave. You're stuck in a slave mentality. They are under the authority of one man who acts as the head of the group. That's what you call a CEO. The definition of kin groups is thus flexible and purely performative. It is based on what a kin group does rather than what it's supposed to be. This is action-oriented behavior. What he was talking about, about what somebody did, this is about doing, right? The main attribute is arguably displayed in, uh, in commemoration because most of the sources tend to be monumental. What are the last six letters of monumental? Mental. He doesn't know that. He can't teach you that. None of you never even noticed that. And you don't know why it's mental, right? I'm going to show you why right now. M monumental in nature, representing an idea of the group that the Egyptians themselves were trying to transmit to their contemporary and future audiences. They were trying to tell you how to restore yourself. That's why these monuments exist. They are testamentary in nature, okay? Oh, and as far as them using the Bible during slavery, look, if the Bible was a tool, you use what tool is available. That's because it's available. There's no indication that it is the best tool for the job. It's what was available. So come out of your fantasy world. Stop talking stupid. It just sounds stupid. It's, it's, I can't even describe how it sounds like somebody who's mentally ill. That's what it sounds like. Okay, let's continue, right? So corporate, a corporate, why? This is what I teach in my course, Kemetonomics, business, the true religion of ancient Egypt. If you think you're going to restore the black, uh, a society, because that's what we're talking about, not fixing a black community. We're talking about restoring a black society. That idiot doesn't know the difference between a community and a society. He would have spoke about it if he did. All right, take my course, Kemetonomics. I teach business is the true religion of ancient Egypt, and I show you the documentation to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. So you don't want to fix the black community, okay? This is, our, this is a society. This is Black Wall Street. That's why a society is a threat, not a community. That's why they destroyed it. 
They destroyed it because it was a prosperous black society. Why did they have to destroy a black society? Because women go where the money flows. White women eventually would have been flowing over into that region because the black men would have had all the money. That equals white genetic annihilation. This is what Francis Crest Welton was trying to tell you. And she named her book, The ISIS Papers. That should tell you something. Come on, people, use your goddamn brains. This is not even a debate. It's like taking candy from a baby. Are you kidding me? You don't know what you're talking about. These are communities. Bellevue Hospital, New York. Psych Ward is a community. Elmira Correctional Facility, New York. The inmates, that's a community. They don't have society. LGBTQ, that's a community. They don't have society, although they're starting to reach society status. But they hide behind the word community because it makes them a protected class. Why does it make them a protected class? Because community equals powerlessness. He doesn't know this. He can't teach you this. He's trying to he's trying to fix something that is powerless. Look at your black community. Haven't you lived long enough being powerless, being led by people that don't understand and can't teach you because they're stuck in a slave posture and slave mentality? So the Bible was a tool used at that time. The slaves also used muskets to get free in the Civil War. Are you saying we should use muskets today against AK-47s, against AR-15s? We should use muskets because that's that slave's mentality. That slave to Zoriak, that's what he's telling you. Because slaves used it, it's therefore the best thing for us. He's mentally ill. He has a Bible psychosis. And those of you who are following him are equally mentally ill. Somebody has to show you this. It's about restoring black society. This is the original Black Wall Street. Right here, don't you see the big wall? Look, you got four walls collapsed on each other. Where do you think they got the concept of Wall Street from, you idiots? Huh? They put it on your goddamn money to tell you, and you still don't see it. I mean, you got to be a special kind of mentally ill person. Goddamn. Right? This is Senefidu uh, Ka. Um, right? Senefidu Ka means Senefidu appears. Why is it named after this king, this black man, this African? Senefidu appears. Here it is. Why? There's a reason for it because it's not just a building. Shadud, strengthen, maintain, perpetuate, flourish, restore buildings. The word for society is kedut, okay? The word for society is kedut. The root word is ked. You have to know what ked means to understand how this stuff works. Do you see this, this right here? This arrow going up the slope of the pyramid? It's called a seked. The root word is ked, slope of a pyramid, ked, right? The next word is ses kedut. Right, we're in our writing now. We gotta use comedic writings. Ked, it means draftsman. What does a draftsman do? Painter, outline. What? What does a draftsman do? Right here, creates blueprints. If you're gonna restore society, you need blueprints. He's not talking about a blueprint because he doesn't have one. He's got slave stories from a Bible and being inspired by movies. He said it himself. Didn't he mention movies? I didn't. He mentioned movies. He's stuck. He's stuck in Hollywood. He, the man has no scholarship. None. Draftsman. Right, it's in our word. We need one word. You're gonna see how many different things this one word relates to, right? Here it is right here, blueprint, plan, design, blueprint, design, plan, technical drawing, blueprint, plan, design, drawing, sketch. What does kadut mean? The same word for society, kadut. It means drawing, sketch. Why? Because it's the product of a blueprint. That's why they left it for you. So you can look at it. Slope, sked, slope of a pyramid. Kadut, draftsman. Can do drawing sketch. This equals blueprint from the Vitus Dictionary. That's what you're looking at. But you're looking at the pyramid. You're looking at a blueprint to restore society, okay, and to maintain it. He tried to tell you. That's why he made the sign. Look, the pyramid, and it's named after Hebrew god Hova. But he's holding up a comedic symbol. Why didn't he hold up a picture of a menorah? Why? Because Hova is not even a comedic, not even a Hebrew god. It's an Egyptian god. I'm in Hebrew. I'm in, I'm in comedic writing. This is Dr. Ben in comedic writing. How did the ancient Africans of Egypt, Northeast Africa, write Jehovah? Right? The strangest chain of events in Egyptian religious history is topped by the 26th dynasty's divine emblem of the figure of one of the gods named Yahu, Yahweh, Yahweh. Okay? Written in hieroglyphs. And he gives you the hieroglyphs. In Yo, hold up, man. Hold up. Who's doing all that noise? Yo, will you please mute that person? Damn. Okay. So, yo, Garfield, will you please no, stop my time? Hola, 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 Shaka. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move, Shaka. Hola. That's been going on for damn near five minutes. Everybody always going for five minutes with you, Shaka. Yeah, man. Yeah. Stop that. Stop hola, that. Hola, hola, hola. <laughs> 
All right, everybody mute. Shaka, go ahead. I'll give you an extra 30. 30 you can still minutes. hear it. You can still hear it, Garfield. Oh, dude, I can't. I can't find the person. Hold on, hold on one second. Motorola. Motorola, Motorola Garfield. Motorola. Hold on, hold on, hold on, beloved. Hold on, hold on. All the way on the bottom, the Moto G. All right, hold on one second, family. Hold on one second. Everybody silent. Relax. I got this. Hey, this wouldn't have happened on our pay-per-view setup, so I can. All righty. I think we good. All right, go ahead, Shaka. I'll start when you start it. Shaka, you got to unmute your mic. Let him know how much time he got, Garfield, so you know. He got two and a half minutes left. Two and a half. I'm gonna give him um three. I'm gonna give him three minutes. Shaka, you up, brother? Shaka, 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 where you at, man? Unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me? Now we yes, hear. You oh, okay, cool. All right, don't stop. I hope you didn't stop my three yet. No. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, let me know when you're ready. All right, go ahead, my brother. Okay, cool. So Dr. Ben showed you in Africa's Now Valley People, Culture, and History. He actually put the glyphs in there. I put the page right here. I photocopied it so you could see it. He's showing you that this is comedic writing. This was a comedic God. And I'm going to show the Hebrews how to pronounce the name of this comedic God that they worship because they don't know how to pronounce it. For the first time, you're going to hear the correct pronunciation. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yah. Yahoo. Yahuha. This is the correct pronunciation. Yahuha. I'm gonna say it again. Yahuha. I'm still hearing noise in the background. Yahuha. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first four letters mean divinity. The last is the picture of this God Himself, of the God Himself. Note that this Egyptian God, Egyptian God. I'm not in no Bible. They were in our stuff. I'm not in their stuff. Stop telling that lie. Note that this Egyptian God was adopted by the Haribu, and they say nothing about no Hebrews, and they say nothing about no Israelites, so I'm not in the Bible. In their own mythology about the creation world, and they y'all want to claim to be the Haribu too, because y'all want to be everybody, okay? So you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Confused ass people, right? So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about this, one word, head. This is the root word. It's a soap of the pyramid. It's a blueprint. It's in one word, head. They were trying to tell you this. Hold on one second. Head, it also means builder, method of building. It also means build, to fashion men. Isn't that what the Hebrew Israelites claim they do? This in the word. That's how they, that's why Kemet was so stable and lasted longer than any other civilization on planet. If you're gonna restore a society, why would you restore it on a society that lasted five minutes like Israel, instead of restoring on a society that was stable for over for 5,000 years or longer? It's not even logical. You don't even apply the basic logic. It's just plain mentally ill. You have a Bible psychosis. Head, build, fashion of men. The same word as the root word for society. The same word as the root word for the slope of the pyramid. It's right, same word for blueprint. It's all in one word. We don't need a hundred books. Here it is right here. Erkedi, to build me up. The same word. It's in all of these things. It's never going to change. Boom, head, form, nature, reputation, character. Remember we talked about mental illness? Character. Let me show you why character matters. Kedu, character of a people. It's the root word in all of it. Ked, that's what you're looking at when you're looking at the pyramid. You're looking at a ked. You're looking at the character of the people. Why character? Remember I told you right down the definition? None of you said this. Character, the mental and moral quality distinctive to an individual. This is why people say Black people have a low IQ. They're talking about our character, but the average Black person doesn't know that character also talks about IQ, not just your morality. It is a combination of both. And when you're looking at the slopes, this is what the cat is. It is the, it's what you call a convergent apogee. When these two things are integrated at their highest development, the further they are, apart, the more disassociated a person is. That's mental illness. That's what's going on. They avoided that by formulating it. You integrate it. What is an apogee? The highest point in the development of something. That's what these slopes represent. That's why his name, that's why it says Senefidu appears. He, you are supposed to look at him and think about his mental and moral nature. This is the documented facts of ancient Kemet and what you're looking at when you're looking at these buildings. It's about society engineering. You don't know anything about this. You are idiot. You are All idiot. Right. You are excellent. All right. Let me finish. Time, time, time. time my brother. Oh, time. you're lucky. Time. All right. 
All right. Um, what do you call it? Um, Captain, you're up. You can mute your mic, um, brother Shaka Mose. All right. All right. Thank you, my brother. All right. Now oh. we'll <laughs> Captain. Oh. Stop, stop sharing, um, beloved. That nigga brought Jay Z to the debate. I ain't never seen that shit before, man. He brought Hove. <laughs> no, you ain't never seen that before. That's gonna get niggas out the street. Man. <laughs> oh man! All right, so Cap, let me know. You, are right, you here, brother? Hold on, let me get. Let me get. Let me get. <laughs> hey T, I know this hurts, man, but you did it to yourself. But I, I love you, though, man. I love you, though. Man, you got your rabbit ass fire right now, man. This nigga brought Jay Z to the debate. Ah, oh, hold on, let me share my screen. Oh, let me share the screen. Uh, boop. Hey, yo, if you hanging out with Wack One Hundred, I could bring Jay Z to the debate. I didn't mention Wack though. I knew, not, I knew not to mention Wack in this debate. <laughs> this nigga bought a whole hole. The nigga don't even throw the rock up no more. Good lord. Okay, let me let me uh let me get to my slide show. Let me go from current slide. Uh let me do this share. Uh you can see my screen. Yes, I can. It's not right, one time. Oh, I don't want to yeah. show this yet. You know, I, I'm so used to nuts like Shaka. Then he said, grab the nuts. Oh, are you are you are you have start my time now? You have start my time right now. All right, go ahead. Every Shaka said one grab them nuts. You know, I'm used to nuts saying stupid shit using a typical plagiarism. So I'll ask him this question later, but as you can see, I'll be prepared for the whole Proverbs argument. That's easy. I'm just gonna pick up my debate because I know how to stick to the subject. The subject is which one, is, this nigga spent 10 minutes on showing a angle of a pyramid and then said the Lord's name was Yakuka. Yakuka. <laughs> Right, let me get to it. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. I'm gonna finish reading. The black, the black convention movement and black facade. Now, this your king. This your king. Let me quote a movie since this nigga throwing up the rock. This your king, nigga. Black convention movement and black politics in 19th century America. It says first organized by free African Americans. The 1830 conventions met periodically throughout the 19th century. The early meetings focused primarily on the abolition of slavery. However, unlike white abolitionists, black abolitionists knew the ending of slavery was one thing, but for African Americans, negotiating in a new world without slavery was not was quite another. As such, these early conventions also argued for equal educational opportunities, land reform, and in the 1850s, the merits of immigration out of the United States. This is all now. What I want everybody to pay attention to: this is all during the time of segregation that they're doing these things. And that's what's important because even in today's time when the Zephaniah says, gather yourselves together, O nation desired, not desired, it's about us being segregated from everybody else so that we can come up. I'm gonna go to the next slide. I'm gonna skip Black Wall Street just for us. No, should I, I'm gonna skip. So Black Wall Street, everybody kind of knows about Black Wall Street. O.W. O. Gurley established a church, a, hold on. So I mean, Garfield, if you could pause real, real fast, I just hit a, a button by mistake. Um, so I got you, I got you. It. It, just, it just messed it up. So I'm just going to do it real fast. I apologize for that. But Shaka been messing up the whole time. He, right. They established a church and businesses. And how did they do that? If I go to Acts 2, it says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So what doctrine was they under in Wall Street? Under that doctrine of being segregated and being under God and being under that Bible. Even if he tried to say the whole copy thing, he'll never show anything that they built from Kemet at all. He's just going to talk about them old ass pyramids. Don't nobody give a fuck about them pyramids at all today. It's a tourist attraction. That's they rob y'all niggas. That's why Jabari and all them charging 3,000, 5,000 to go see some pyramids. Niggas stay saving up their hard earned money to go see a pyramid, come back home broke. So Acts 2 and 43, and the fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Verse 45, and they, I'm sorry, verse 44, and they all that believed were together and had all things in common. That's what Wall Street had. They had all things in common. So Gurley had his businesses and he would loan money to others for them to get their businesses. That's why we ain't had a city built like that. But as we get early, later on with the MLKs and when we start segregating, that, excuse me, integrating, that's when we lost a lot of that. I'm gonna go to the next slide. 
the black church and the key to black econ well i'm gonna skip this one for now because i want to get to a couple of living examples on staten island one of new york's oldest african-american enclaves is presented this is what they built on the strength of that bible one of the community's greatest assets was the roseville ame zion church founded in 1850. remember the church or the spirituality of any nation is the cornerstone because that's what they use as, it's almost like a constitution so black people don't have a constitution they don't have a morality to follow they don't have an economic to follow they don't have none of that to follow but they established churches and that became the foundation that church was under the bible under that god it says a later house a plain wooden structure that erected in 1854 on crabtree avenue it was one of several AME Zion churches in the city. Members of its various congregation included Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Two. Y'all notice I keep naming the same revolutionaries because they were all committed to being under God, being under that Bible, establishing the church, and fixing the people. That's what he would have to show. Because what do we do today? In Israelite School of UPK, we're under God under that Bible, we go in the cities, build them and establish schools everywhere. I'm in my school right now. When I got here, the school wasn't built. I built this school. That's what you're supposed to do. It says, I'm going, I'm going to skip to the next one so I can get to it. Archives and art, art, artifacts, the rediscovery and research of Seneca Village, the water. The settlement of Seneca Village in 1825, another village. Let's see how that was established. The Whiteheads owned farmland in the West in the 80s and 90s, but decided to divide up their land into individual lots for sale. Epiphany Davis, a store clerk, was the second purchase, excuse me, second person to purchase land, 12 lots out of the church. From there, that whole entire community was born. For all that pyramid rap, crap, all he talk about, he cannot show that they used any of that to build nothing, but I have shown it. This theology by James H. Cohen, which is Black Theology and Black Power, so I can get to the elements of culture. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of this. James H. Cohen was an American theologian, and this is what he wrote about Black theology and Black power. He's a Christian, too. It says the term Black power was first used in the civil rights movement in the spring of 1966 by Stokely Carmichael to designate the only appropriate response to white racism. Since that time, many critics have observed there is no common agreement regarding its definition. The complexity of this problem is evident in the development of Marvel analytical philosophy. We are still in the process of defining such terms as democracy, good, evil, and many others. In fact, the ability to probe for deeper meanings of words as they relate to various manifestations of reality is what make the intellectual pursuit interesting. I'm gonna go to the next slide. It says the same is true with the words of black power. To what object does it point to? What does it mean when it is used by advocates? It means complete emancipation of black people from white oppression by whatever means black people deem necessary. That's what he's saying about black power. The methods may include selective buying, boycotting, marching, or even rebellion. Black power means freedom. Page 35, on American scene today as yesterday, one problem stands out, the enslavement of black Americans. But we as we, excuse me, but as we examine what contemporary theologians are saying, we find that they are silent about the enslaved condition of black people. Evidently, they don't see no relationship between black slavery and the Christian gospel. Conse excuse me, unfortunately, Christianity came to the black man through white oppressors who demanded that he reject his concern for the world and affirm his blackness to whiteness. That's how they used to give us Christianity. The last, last page. Therefore, is it appropriate to ask, is it possible for men to really be black and still feel any identity with the biblical tradition expressed in the Old and New Testament? Is it possible to strip the gospel as it has been interpreted of its whiteness so that the real message will become a live option for radical advocates of black consciousness? Is there any relationship at all between the work of God and the activity of the ghetto? Must black people be forced to deny their identity in order to embrace Christianity? Finally, black power as described in chapter one, compatible with Christian faith, are we dealing with two utterly different perspectives. One more slide and then I'm going to go show y'all something else. It says, page 44, if the gospel is the gospel of liberation for the oppressed, when Jesus is where the oppressed are and continues his work of liberation there, 
Jesus is not safely confined in the first century. He is our contemporary, proclaiming release to the captives and rebelling against all who silently accept the structure of injustice. If he is not in the ghetto, if he is not where men are living at the brink of existence, but is rather in the easy life of the suburbs, then his gospel is a lie. The opposite, however, is the case. Christianity is not alien to black power. It is black power. Now, let's go to elements of culture. You have seven elements, social organization and society, customs and tradition, language, arts and literature, moral code, shit, government. How do I go? Salaki, Garfield, can you pause one second? I just, oh, I got it. Never mind, Salaki. So elements of culture, social organization, a kinship structure of culture or society, especially as constituted and stabilized network of rules and descent and residence, the system of relationship between persons among groups which regard to the division of activity and functional arrangement of mutual obligations. Deuteronomy 4 and 6 says, keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear your statutes. What we lack is the law, statutes, and commandments. That's the wisdom and understanding that God gave us. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 19, it says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness. We follow the wisdom of this world we will not ascertain anything Black, anything Hispanic, anything Native Indian. When you go to Jeremiah 29 and 4, it says, the Lord said, when you are carried away into captivity, you go build houses, you dwell in them, you plant gardens, you take ye wives. That's why I showed you what them slaves did. I showed you what them slaves did because them slaves lived Jeremiah the 29th chapter. They went out and built houses. You know what we did? We forgot about that Bible that would instruct us on how to live. If I go further, what do you need to have an organization and structure? You need a chief of tribes, wise men. You make them heads over you. You make them captains over thousands, captains over hundreds. You give them charge. When they do judgment, you make sure that they don't have respect of persons in judgment. Even a king, as Deuteronomy the 17th chapter says, even a king can't rebel against the laws of God. When David committed adultery and murdered that man, there was a prophet that came and held him accountable. That's how you have a social organization. In the black community, you don't have that. If you followed the Bible, we would have that social structure. If I go further, no, I'm going to skip this for, for time's sake. I'm going to skip that for time's sake. This Now we go into customs and traditions. Y'all, the one thing I'll give Shaka credit for, Shaka will carry that Egyptian culture. He'll wear that weave in his head. He'll put the eyeliner on when he's like, and I'm going to show you. He sing that shit. He sung the shit out of that. God, as I said, he's going to make drill music out of that shit. And I'm going to show you the blood black land. So now in the elements of culture, Y'all can make fun of what we wear, but whereas everybody else was out there celebrating Good Friday and they, they preparing to celebrate the Easter Bunny, we was keeping our customs and culture. We had the Passover right in North Carolina last week where brothers and sisters under the guise of that social economic structure of the Bible converged on North Carolina. We met, we had brother, let me show, y'all see the pictures here? Let me show the brother because they're going to say we ain't got no sisters. Y'all see the sisters here? Now, I, I take I like this picture because they say if you handicap the something, you can't come to our feast days or nothing like that. You can't come to the Passover. But we got our kids. We got our family all living under the guise of that Bible. That's what we lived under. Now we're going to the video is not here, though. Salaki, the video. Yeah. Now we're going to get into element. Another element of culture is men need to have discipline. So we have what's called Hebrew Academy where Psalms 18 and 34, it says, he teaches my hands to war so that the bow of steel is broken in my arms. I would like to play the video that I have, but unfortunately I couldn't get it in here. Wait, will it play? Nope, Salaki. Can y'all, hey, Garfield, can you see my screen? When I clicked that link, it might've took me out of the PowerPoint. Yeah, I could see your screen, brother. You see the, uh, I'm sorry, do you see a video about the play? Um, I, hold on, let me pause this time. Okay. Um, I see like some brothers are, a training, karate training or something? Yeah, I'm going to see if I can. Can you hear that? Psalms 80, 1834. Okay, but you don't see the, the video. Okay, so I'm going to stop this share real fast. I'm going to share just so I can show the brothers, these uh, the audience, this video. All I'm right, about we to got play. two and a half minutes left. God damn. Okay. Well, I'm not going to play the video. So, like, let me stop. I'm going to skip it. 
I want to get. I told you to do 20 minutes, Cap. You just scared. Listen, if we'd have did 20 minutes, it would have been more shock of bullshit. <laughs> Please don't you shouldn't do an after party. No, this is the first time you should not do an after party, brother. Don't do no after party yeah, whatsoever. Right after this, we're doing one. Right after this. It ain't gonna be for Shaka. <laughs> hey, you can start. You can start my time again. You can start my time. I would go to. The, let me make sure. Wait. All right. So I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna skip that. Even in the language, for the same, we teach our language and culture. That metal net. I guarantee you, whatever that metal net he read, I guarantee you, somebody gonna say that shit was wrong. We teach our culture, and these are all elements of a society that you need. And that's what I'm showing here. I guarantee you he won't show that. These are different Hebrew words that we would have. I want to get to something else. I'm kind of skipping some of this stuff that I have here. That's the best selling. That's more culture. Moral code. Deuteronomy 28 and 1 says, And it shall come to pass that thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments. He would set us above. We leave the commandments. We won't. So when you talk about a moral authority, if it's talking about murder, we can go to Exodus 21, 12, 14, Leviticus, the 24th chapter. If it's talking about striking or cursing the parent, like y'all see them videos where these little boys is hitting their parents, we got something to deal with that. Kidnapping with all our sisters getting kidnapped. We got something to protect them from that. Sorcery and witchcraft, them drugs y'all love to smoke, all that weed y'all like to do and cocaine and heroin, we can deal with that. Bestiality, I wouldn't put bestiality on blacks and Hispanics. That's more like white folk shit. Or, or technically, African, <laughs> African <laughs> shit. Like incest. We ain't into no incest. But I will say King Tut, mother and father, was related. They were brother and sister. Rebellion against parents. Refusal to obey a decision or judge. Perjury in cases. Homosexuality. Is that not plaguing us today? Homosexuality? Human sacrifice? adultery. So when it talks about a moral code, we have the laws in place. We live the laws in place. In 2005, black people accounted for 13% of the U.S. total population, but were victims 49%. If we follow our moral authority, we wouldn't be that way, but we would rather be under the curses. When I read Deuteronomy 28 and 4, it says, so that the tender man among you, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. What did Christ come and bring? He came and gave us the greatest commandments, Matthew 22 and 36, which is the greatest commandment. Yahweh shall said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy might, and thy strength. And if that's the first and greatest commandment, the second is thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When y'all see me with my brothers, I don't know none of them without following these scriptures. None of them. I ain't met them a day of my life. I ain't crossed paths with them. I ain't did business with them. I only know them because we came together under that Bible. What I know about that conscious community, they ain't together no more. Under Kimmy. Ain't none of them together. Y'all go look at that picture of Sarnetta when he got all them blackity black niggas lined up together. If Sarnetta was to take that picture today, it'd be him, Jabari, and Garfield. And Jabari and Garfield probably say, let me take a separate picture. They would not be together at all. <laughs> Time, time, time. We got to stop here right here. Time, time. <laughs> Captain is my man. <laughs> all right, let me keep my mic. All mind. right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the third and final round by um, Shaka Amos. Then I don't know, do you, do you guys want to um, do questions and answers? We talk about it after Shaka is finished. And then if not, we'll just go to the final final um part now we got to give them the question and answers man the people right. got to get money's worth let's give it to them all right cool all right hey ladies and gentlemen thank you for being consistent and not coming off the mic i appreciate it I'm, i don't want to speak too soon and for those who came in late shoot me an email at axebrothergarfield at gmail.com and i will send you the whole debate in the morning all right and remember that axebrothergarfield at gmail.com and um, I'll send you the entire debate from the beginning. All right, Shaka Amos, when you are ready, beloved, I will start the clock. You can share your screen when you're ready. Get the ball rolling, and we good to go. All right, awesome. Could you just give me a second? Hello? Go ahead, my brother. All right, you can give me a second, right? Yes, sir. Okay, All right. thank you very much. Give me one second. All right, uh, I'll be right with you.
Sonetta, after the debate, are you doing an after show live on Sonetta Studios? He might have to take Tazari. I got to drink for feeling bad for getting his butt beat. And uh, keep his spirits coming in. Again, if you're um, late to the debate, you want to see the entire debate, shoot me an email at askbrothergarfield at gmail. Don't nobody believe that shit, Shaka. <laughs> Oh, everybody know you got beat bad. They know you got beat bad. They know it. They know you got beat really bad. And you playing it off good. I like that. That's some hey, soldier yeah, shit. Yeah, stay on, stay on mute, feed, brother. Playing, yes, playing it off. Yes, playing it off like playing it off like you didn't get your, playing it off like you didn't get your well rocked tonight. Yeah, people are not stupid. What you're depending on is everybody's ignorance. Give me one second. I'll be right with you. Okay. All right. So you know what? I'll do it like this. I ain't gonna even do it because this thing won't let me. No big deal. All right, I'll just start from here. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, we did that, we did that, uh, we did that, we did that. Hold on a second, I'll be right with you. I'm just getting it right back to where we left off. Okay, this is fine right here. Okay, okay. Um, so I guess I can start here, I don't mind. Come here, then go to the paper and cut slide. Okay, and I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and in fact, here we go. All right. So, um, all right. While while we're waiting, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you received or came into the debate late and you want to see it from the beginning, please email me at askbrothergarfield at gmail dot com. There we go, my brother. I'm just calling me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. All right. Hey, Shaka. Yes. Are you ready, beloved? I'm ready. All right, go ahead. I'll start the time. Okay. So getting the language right, that's what this is all about. Character and apogee, I showed you. Now, how many of you before tonight did not know that when you're looking at the pyramids, that that's what they represent? The highest development of a person's mental and moral capacity, their mental and moral nature. You didn't know that. How many of you before tonight did not know that mental also designates your psyche, your intellect, your mind, not just your, not just your moral situation or your value system, but your mind? your intelligence. This is why white people write books about black people having low IQs, right? It's really an attack on our character. It's to besmirch our character and our reputation because character and reputation go together, all right? If you look at the word ked, and I just showed you that, hold on one second. Come on, come on, baby. We ain't got time to be stolen, right? Right here, ked, reputation, character. They had one word because they figured out how all of these things are connected. These idiots don't know how they're all connected. They need a thousand different words to say one thing. We had one word that said everything. It's showing you the slope. It's the same word for society. It's the same word for building up a person. It's the same word for the character of a people. It also means, here's the root word, ked, kedef. It means to gather sayings to collect, to collect sayings. This is how so-called biblical literature, and I'm not even talking about the Bible. I'm talking about scripture. Let's just use the word scripture. This is how scripture got created on planet Earth. It got created through this. Kadef, the original commandment came from our language. Kadef, to gather sayings, collect. It's the same word, the same root word that's used for the um slope of the pyramid. The same word that's used for blueprint. It's the same word for you drawing and sketch. Kadut, the same word. They're not teaching you this because they can't teach you what they don't know. If you want to keep learning from stupid people, listen to them, right? Right. So it says to gather sayings right here. Kadev, to gather sayings, collect, collect. But if you if you only, if sayings only remain as sayings, they're just oral. So once you gather them, there's only one way that you can gather them. You have to do the one thing that Egypt created, 
writing. You have to write it down. So then you have a sebaiit. The sebaiit, written teachings, instructions. This is the origin of all scripture. There wasn't no stupid, I don't even want to talk about that dumb book, right? And as far as him, let me stop sharing for a second. You can keep my time going. I want to stop sharing for a second so I can share something else. Share screen, right? Um, where is that? Ooh. All right, I'm gonna take a chance to do this. Share, right? Let me show you something. Oh, darn. Okay, that's all right. I'll eat up my time doing it. Um, That's what I want, okay? So I'm not going in the Bible, but he talked about um, teaching their language in their school. I got no problem with that, right? Uh, hold on one second. Where is my thing to share? This stuff is all over the place, man. I freaking hate this stuff. Uh, Zoom, uh, here we go, Zoom. All right, share screen, right? So here we go, right? Right here. Can you see my screen? Garfield, I mean, Garfield, can you see my screen? Yes, sir, I could see you. Okay, oldest, oldest Hebrew inscriptions. I'm not in the Bible. Oldest Hebrew inscriptions, because the Hebrew deals with more than just the Bible, right? Oldest Hebrew inscriptions. Numerous older tablets have been found in the region with similar scripts written in other Semitic languages, for example, proto Sinaitic. It is believed that the original shapes of the script go back to Egyptian hieroglyphs. So we don't care that you're teaching your language in your in your in your fake school. It comes from our stuff. You're a copy. You're everything about you is like we had a name for you, pleather. Back in the day, you're not real leather. You're pleather. Okay. So I mean, let's just keep it 100, right? Share screen. Let me get back to the real deal. Here we go, right? So the say by each. That's what this word means. Uh, kedef to gather the sayings, gathering the sayings, the collection. You end up with the say by each. Written teaching and instructions. Now, what they're depending on, they know we all know the Bible. How are you bragging about black people that were colonized, had their names taken, their memories wiped clean, and just used the only thing that they had? So they were supposed to fail because they were in that position? No, they made the best out of a bad situation and they used what they had. That's more about their own intelligence than it is about the Bible. And even if it is the Bible, you can't prove they weren't looking at comedic literature in the Bible because it's documented as being in there. Either way, you lose this debate by virtue of logic, okay? If you, But you're not logical, so it doesn't really matter, right? So here we go, blueprint, okay? They know that you don't know the literature. They don't know the literature, right? This is the Sebae, the first and oldest testament. When they collected the sayings, they put them down in writing. This is the first scripture on planet Earth. You're looking at it. And remember, it's the same word. Kedet, kedut, ked, the ked, slope of a pyramid. It's about character. I showed it to you. Go back and look. That's why it says shurud, strengthen, maintain, perpetuate, restore buildings. When you talk about restoring buildings and the same word for this slope means character and the same word ked or kedut means building up the character of a person. I showed you it said, build me up. I documented it for you. This is, it's all integrated. Theirs is not integrated because it's all a copy, period. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about it. Guidance, sebaid also means guard, I mean guidance. Guidance is a synonym for guard, okay? It comes, in fact, if you look at the word guidance, it comes from the word guard. Look it up. So that means without, guard, without guidance, you are vulnerable. That's what sebaid means, you are vulnerable. They know that since we were stripped of our sebaid, we have been vulnerable as a, as a people. So they take advantage of that by shoving the Bible in front of your face. Okay, here we go. This is what is it about? Right thinking and right action, the opposite of mental illness, which is the number one thing plaguing our community. Okay, death and salvation in ancient Egypt. It talks about the purpose of the say by eat. Listen and pay attention. I'm gonna try to make it through. This is very important because it shows you the role of the father and the son and how the ancient Egyptians understood, the comedic people understood this. Introduction, introduction for the Egyptians, integration into society was the most important and the most effective way of enhancing their life and denying their subjection to death. They had a saying, one lives if another guides him. One thus lived in the full sense of the word when another gave him guidance. As the Egyptians conceived it, there was a crucial aspect of human personality that did not develop from the inside to the outside, but in the opposite direction, from the outside to the inside. This is why society matters. Society comes first, not the community. 
the society can either make a community successful or it can destroy a community. So he's not prioritizing, right? Because the Bible doesn't can't teach you that. They made the essential distinction within the totality of a person, not that between the body and the soul, but that between the individual self and the social self. The soul of the individual or bodily self included the body and the shadow, while the social self was comprised of the kind and name. The intactness and the vividness of the social self was as important to life as the intactness and health of the individual self. At birth, life was just a possibility, one that was actualized only when the social self was developed through a process of socialization, hence the root word for society, social. Life was thus more a matter of culture than of nature. It was in this respect that the Egyptians viewed the possibility of prolonging life beyond its biological limitations through cultural effort. Setting the setting of these instructions in this literature, it was always a father who was the teacher instructing his son in the rules of what living with others. This is what the black community does not have. Okay, uh, 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 this instruction uh, had an because the father's out of the home, right? This instruction had an unmistakably what testamentary character. This is where you get your term Old Testament, New Testament from. It comes from the say by eat, idiots. It was it was the bequest of the father to the son who was supposed to take his place amongst the living and see the continued existence of the father. In the previous chapter, we cited the description of old age from instruction of Tahotep as an example of the physical experience of morality. Here we wish to consider it in its context where it serves as the motive for the instruction of the son. Tahotep's reference to his old age leads to his request for the king's permission to instruct his son. May this servant be a command to make himself a staff of old age. Then I shall... Then shall I tell him the words of the hearers, the thoughts of the predecessors who once heeded the gods or who once served the ancestor kings. Then the majesty of this God spoke. If you instruct him in the words of the past, he will be a model for the sons of high officials. What is heard will enter him along with all of the reliability of one who speaks to him for no one is born wise. Reliability, that's what Kemet was about producing and engineering, reliable men. That's why it was called the father-son constellation. On the threshold of death, an old man passed his summary of his knowledge along to his son. This was the typical situation in which Egyptian wisdom was handed down. It had both an initiatory and a testamentary character. That's where the Hebrews and the Christians got all of that shit from, being initiated and having testaments. For the mortuary cult and the wisdom had the same root, the father-son constellation. The point of the father-son constellation was mutual. See, this repairs the father-son relationship in the black community. And they know that by taking this, this is what destroyed us. The Bible does not give you this back. The son endowed his deceased father with life by pronouncing his name, intervening on his behalf, restoring and maintaining his place and status in society. So the father is still effective in society even after he's gone. The father endowed his son with life first by introducing him into society, by raising him into a life in society and thereby socializing him. You cannot be raised into life in the community. And that requires a society. This slave mentality man talking to you does not know any of this. This is the meaning of the maxim, one lives if another guides him. Here we are dealing with the connectivity during life. Just as the deceased person lives again, if his name is mentioned, so a living person is alive only in the full sense of the word, only if another is there to guide to give him guidance. True life requires at least two persons. Obviously, the conditions the Egyptians called life in its full sense did not begin with birth, but only with someone else was there to provide guidance. That's why you have people walking around like the living dead on 125th Street and all these other black communities, because they had no guidance. Not a goddamn Bible. They had no guidance. A man was alive by virtue of his entering into a constellative community that included his friends, family, superiors, and subordinates. Egyptian ethics was connective because it arose from an image as death of death as disconnectedness. That's what death it is, the ultimate form of isolation, and, the, and thus of death as isolation and the collapse of connection. When someone dies, they are eternally beyond your reach. Isolation. So they, were, they built a society on the opposite, which is life, true connectedness, true life. See, the Bible can't give you this. It doesn't know anything about this. Its goal was to make a person live through integration. A pupil who was unable to hear was thus incapable of being guided by others. Like to Zoriak, he was like one of the living dead. That is what you are. You are a zombie. You are a living dead zombie. You want to know what our scriptures teach and what, they, what subjects we master? Here you go. They don't, the Bible cannot touch this. They know that you don't know about our literature. Nobody has taught you. Nobody's introduced you. It deals with accusation, defamation, gossip, rumor, slander, acknowledgement, credit, reward, action, age, anger, burning, evil, animals, arrogance, boasting, bragging, pride, caution, character, cleanliness, community, com community, all right? Our stuff teaches you about community. Conflict and resolve. 
consequences, law of punishment, conservation and expenditure, correction, instruction, listening, teaching, courage, coveting, death, decay, deception, despair, discouragement, worry, destiny, fate, fortune, discretion, modesty, reserve, discernment, eating, effectiveness, ineffectiveness, evil, faith, fidelity, falsehood, family, fathership, fear, females, focus. You won't even find that word fathership in the Bible. Females, focus, food, fools, friendship, generosity, giving, gluttony, greed over eagerness, God, goodwill, hate, all of our, our stuff teaches all of this. The Bible comes nowhere close. Health, heart, hierarchy, home, ignorance, intergenerational transmission, inebriation, substance abuse, judgment, justice, killing, knowledge, leadership, listening, love, males, marriage, maturity, measured, money, business, wealth, mothers, numbers, order, patience, peace, piety, planning, preparation, politics, poverty, power, preparation, power, protection, safety, protocol, um, race, real estate, reciprocity, relationship, reputation, resources, respect, responsibility, revenge, retribution, retaliation, rude, ruin, um, science, self-control, service. You want to talk about building the Bible? They use the Bible to build Black Wall Street. How long did Black Wall Street last? How long did it last? How long did Kemet last? 5,000 years more. You want to compare something that people that built the Bible, that used the Bible to build something, none of them built anything that lasted 5,000 years. You'll sound stupid. You'll sound mentally ill because you are. Revenge, rude, ruin, science, self-control, service, sex, shame, social sonship, speech, stability, success, theft, time, timing, travel, trust, violence, war, waste, um, wise work, um, worthiness, writing, extras. Oh, those are things I remember. <laughs> I went into extras. Now watch this. Hold on one second. How much time I got left? Talk to me. How much time do I have left? You have two minutes and... Two, two and a half minutes, brother. I have two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. All right. Here we go. Okay, cool. Let me come right here. All right. Matter of fact, come here. Here we go. There. There. Okay, here we go. Right. So, um, no, no, no. Let's do this right. Um, let me see. How do I get this back up? Here we go. You got two and a half minutes left, brother. I know, I know, I know. I'm doing my best. Here we go. Um, play from current slide. Here we go. All right, Let's now I got to share my screen. Here, let me share my screen. It. I paused it. All right, let me share my screen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Share my screen. Okay, I'm ready to start again. Let's go. Right. And matter. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Martin Bernal. Okay, in matters of sexual circumscription, Black Athena, the Afro-Asiatic roots, classical civilization. Dr. Martin Bernal, PhD, Cambridge University. It says right here. Orpheus talking about Greek culture. Now remember, the original Bible is not written in Hebrew. It's written in Greek. It's written in Greek. Freaks. Homosexuals. That's what it's written in the language of homosexuals. It's not written in Hebrew. The Septuagint was not written in Hebrew originally. It was written in Greek. They created the letter of Aristeus to pretend it was originally written in Hebrew. It's a lie. It was written in Greek. So was the New Testament, originally in Greek. Homosexual languages. What does it say? It talks about the Greeks. Orpheus and Dionysus seemed in many ways to duplicate each other's similarity, but with some hostility between them. Egyptian society appears to have been rather intolerant of homosexuality. That's a fact. Here you go. Oxford definition. What does intolerant mean? Not tolerant of views, beliefs, or behaviors that differ from one's own. That means that they were not into homosexuality, not only not into it, but strongly against it. That's documented. Okay? So you want to talk about what we teach? Go into the, here's the original text right here, primary source, number 19. O Wememti, snake who came forth from the place of execution. I have not committed homosexuality. Oh, you whose faith is behind him who came forth from the cavern of wrong. I have neither misconducted myself or copulated with a boy. So they're against homosexuality and pedophilia. Hold on. Penises shall travel into ready vaginas and vulvas in the position. That's from the pyramid text. The first one was from the book of the dead. Our writing, we don't need your Bible. We know what our morals are. You've never heard this. This is from, um, what you call it, a minimo, right? You really need to read that. If you are a man of worth, or Tahoe if you are a man of worth and produce a son by the grace of God, if he is straight, do you see the word, you retard? If he is straight and takes after you, takes good care of your possessions, do for him all that is good. He is your son. Your car begot him. Don't withdraw your heart from him. Straight. They actually use the word straight. What is straight? Look at the dictionary. Right here, adjective, informal, 
heterosexual. You want to talk about what we teach? The only way you can convince Hebrew Israelites that something is wrong with Kimmy is for you to lie, misrepresent, cheat, and steal. And that's how you represent your God? You ain't even representing your God. You're misrepresenting our God. Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Okay? Say his name right. Time, my brother. Time. Okay. All right. Um, that's the third and final round from um, are you guys um get off mic, Captain. Do you guys want to do a question and answer period? Yes, yes they do. All right. Hey, you can't answer for us, man. <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> it's seven minutes and, and listen, listen, listen. The problem is this now, right? We got to be under real control in this segment. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give y'all awesome. one minute, right? Just to compose y'all questions. Hey, can Shaka go first? Do. I don't have no questions. Okay. I'll go first. But um, uh, uh, to Zora, I got to say something. To you. Um, I have a lot of respect for you, bro. The fact that you even took this debate, because a lot of cats would have been scared and you stepped up. Um, I think you did a piss poor job, but you, you certainly made an effort to prove your point. But it's 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 a dead point, uh, especially when compared to the facts and, and the Shaka, documents. Shaka, but hold on, hold on, Shaka. yeah. Can I say Shaka something? Shaka closing argument. Hold on, oh, okay. Let's All right. Not even do that right now. Oh, so what are we doing now? So what? So what are we doing now? Wait, wait, Garfield. Can I just say something back? I want you to take that long. Yeah, go ahead, beloved. Appreciate it. Shaka, I have no respect for you. I okay, no that's fine. I, I, I know you want to upstage me. That's I fine. Ain't, I ain't interrupting you. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I <laughs> but okay. I have none. That's cool. The way you. I don't you, expect you to. I could tell because you keep and you can't say I don't respect you if you said I got respect for you unless you were lying. I didn't say I didn't respect you. I said I didn't say I didn't respect you. Okay. I said I don't expect you to. Have oh, don't, okay, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So now, with that said, I although would, you're lying because you told Sanetta that you did, I so I can't even talk because uh, you're hold lying. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, 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 let's do this. This this is not a good idea right now. Okay. Let's do oh, this. Only let's from do his this. side because he interrupted me. All yeah, right. but hold on, hold on, Captain. Hold on one second. But Captain, you gotta let finish, Captain finish. Let him finish. Let him Go ahead, Captain. Finish, finish your point. So the Go reason ahead. why I say that is because before this debate, I did. I would say I always give you the position of being like the best Kimmy guy, and you came in here, and I felt like I was debating the other shocker, the other shocker that Sinetta brought on here that interviewed him. That's, I mean, this is horrible. It's a horrible debate. That's why I ain't got no you're questions. But that's supposed all. To say that. That's it. That's you're all. supposed to say no, that. That's no, called Shaka, frontal. Shaka, you gotta let him finish. Yeah. It's one no, night. I was done. Hell, I, was I didn't go on for twenty minutes. The hell, uh, I hope uh, he had to say uh, hold that. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. This, we're getting out of control right now. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Now, Captain, do you have any questions for Shaka? No. no, that's why I asked if Shaka would go first, and Shaka said, "I think Shaka said he would." All right, Shaka, do you have any questions for Captain? Yes, I do. All right, so I'm gonna put the clock on for seven minutes. And we're right gonna do now, five, we're gonna do five questions. What's up, Cap? I was just gonna say I just wanted Shaka to go first, and then maybe I have some questions after that. So I'm that's gonna... fine. That's fine. I'm gonna give you that opportunity, brother. I wouldn't I wouldn't leave you to drive like that. All right. And listen, um, once Shaka asks you the question, you're gonna have to answer. Shaka, you can't interrupt him while he's answering the question because both okay. mics are open. So we gotta be under control. All right. All right, but let me let me say this real quick because if Shaka is in the point of asking his questions for the five minutes, once Shaka say I'm good with that, you gotta you gotta let him be good because it's Shaka's time. The so same you, way with like, Captain Tazoria. When you saying Tazoriak like if I say, to, when if Tazoriak I to answer, say I'm good with it, then you gotta move on because he's wasting Tazoria. So he could stop me, right? So he could stop me when he feels he's satisfied. That's what you're saying. And you can stop him when you feel yeah, he's I get satisfied. It. I'm just making sure I understand. Okay. Yes, because you know how people draw it out, and then that's right. your time going. Right, right. I got. So you. once y'all both feel that you're satisfied with the answer, you can move on and stop him. All right, I'm gonna put the talk. It's seven minutes. I'm gonna start the clock right now. Shaka Amos, are you ready with your first question, brother? Uh, yeah, I'm ready with the first question. I remember. Hold on, hold on, one second. Um, Shaka, can you read the flyer? I don't have, hold on, do I have the flyer here? Let me see if I got the flyer on my computer. It says, mm -hmm. whose ancient writings can fix the black community? Mm -hmm. Whose records are stronger? This is the early flyer I have. I don't have the-, the All right, the, the proper title for this um, joint is, whose ancient writings can fix the black community? Whose records are stronger? Captain can only use the Bible. Shaka can only use the comedic records. All mm. right, all right. So let's start the, the question. Answer. Let's start the questions. And Shaka, I'm gonna start the time in five, four, 
three, two, one. Go ahead, my brother. All right. So, um, to Zoria, you are continually bringing the Bible front and center, and you make the claim that because the slaves used it, it is therefore the best thing for us to use because it worked for the slaves. So those same slaves who uh, fought to get free during the Civil War, they used muskets to defend themselves. Are you therefore saying that because muskets were the best thing at the time that we should still use muskets in warfare in modern age in an advanced period? Is that what you're saying? No, I would never say we should use muskets because um, technology changes. So guns changed. Even the formation of guns where you had to make the gunpowder, stick the gunpowder, jam it down with the little rod, then you shoot it one at a time. Now they got semi-automatics. They got automatics. So that wouldn't make sense. But from a Bible perspective, love thy brother as thyself. Thou shalt not commit adultery. The dietary law, what foods we can eat, what foods we cannot eat, that's eternal. Right. Like for, for example, fins and scales. There ain't a fish that has fins. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. You answered, you answered my question. All right. So um so so you're saying because technology has advanced, therefore you don't need to, uh, we don't need to use muskets. So what I submit to you is that the Sebaites that I showed, all of that deals with technology as well. It deals with human technology, the building up of people. You saw in the word ked, it said build me up. That's what it literally means. Build me up, character-wise. And character responds to both intellect and morality. This is the point I'm making. This is the point that this is what the documentation shows, right? So what I'm saying is that uh, being that the comedic literature was far more advanced than the biblical literature, it only makes sense if, if we're going to use advanced um, technology, it only makes sense to go with the comedic technology because it's far more advanced. Shaka, than Shaka, the you support, hola, Shaka. All right, so I got another question. question. Yeah, All right, let me ask another question. question. Let me ask another All question. Right. All right, so let me see what other question I have here. I'm gonna have to make something up. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Um, them saved slaves, because you keep hopping on the slaves using the Bible, right? So those same slaves that use the Bible um, to do this, that, and a third, um, which I commend them for, I commend the slaves, right? And I commit, um, uh, and I commend the comedic literature inside the Bible that may have played a role in inspiring them, most likely did play a role in inspiring them. So my question to you is this, those same slaves who fought in the Civil War to get free, they also used the horse and buggy, right? So are you saying that because the horse and buggy worked best for us at that time that we should use the horse and buggy today in order to get around? Again, no, I'm not. The title of the debate was um, which records can fix the black community? No, I know, I know that, but I'm asking, I'm, 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 you gotta, I'm, you I'm addressing your logic. Shaka, 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 hold on. You gotta let him answer, bro. All right, I'm letting, let him him answer. Answer. I'm letting him answer. Go yeah. ahead. I appreciate it. So asking me about a horse and buggy, we will be behind times right? because everybody else will be driving vehicles. Right. But right. using that Bible as inspiration, we would never be behind times. Those slaves, the reason why I applaud those type of slaves or those type of Christians, because the scriptures that said, be amongst yourselves, don't be integrated. That's what those slaves did to become great. In today's times, we're so worried about being integrated, we won't segregate like the Bible said. And even though they segregated, they still built amongst themselves and dealt with other nations economically. We could learn a lot from that. So that's how you follow. Hope I answered your question. Okay, um, so uh, you also made a statement. You said Christianity is black power, right? So um, you read that. You were, when you were reading your literature and talking about how Christianity is black power. So my question to you is, how can a book that was written by Greeks in the Greek language, right? How can that book be black power? If it's Greeks that wrote it, and in many respects, it was written for a Greek audience. Most of the places that Paul purportedly spoke at, like Corinth and places like that, were to Greek speaking people. How can that, represent black power in its essence it just it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me i'm just trying to make it equate i'm trying to integrate the two the two things it was an american that wrote that book black power right right mm -hmm. but he was black yeah just like they could be like paul was a roman citizen but he was an israelite from the tribe of benjamin specifically 
So there's a such thing as having a citizenship and then who you are ethnically. So when y'all say Greeks wrote this and Greeks wrote that, and Paul was this and Paul was that, Paul was an Israelite, but he was also a Roman. So you can have citizenship in anywhere. If I go to London, like I'm going to London in September, I'm gonna be over there as London, I'm gonna be an American citizen, but I'm black. Your citizenship and your ethnicity are two different things. So the New Testament was not written by Greeks, a, 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 like as in white people. It was written by people that were called Greeks. And last thing, Matthew's, excuse me, Maccabees, the six, second chapter, second, excuse me, second Maccabees six and six said they made it illegal to profess yourself to be a Jew. So you were forced to take on Greek and Roman citizenship or Greek and Roman identity, but that doesn't make you those people. The Greeks conquered everywhere. The Patoli, for example. All right, I, I don't want to eat up the rest of my time. Thank you for your answer. Um, uh, this is a, a, another question that I have. And this one I'm not even writing down. It's really just coming genuinely from me. Um, being that it's been so heavily documented that um, there's so much um, comedic literature in the Bible, um, there's just so much of it in there and it's constantly being documented. My question to you is, why does that disturb you so much? Why does that fact bother you so much um, when it's just a matter of fact? Uh, and, and then a, the, a, the, a, a question I would attach to that is what are the implications of that? Like, like, like what should we um, take from that? And this is a genuine question, right? Mm -hmm. So Sanetta so, so told me I shouldn't be, he said, see, I told you, Shaka, if you try to be respectful, <laughs> uh, whatever, I don't care. The fact that you have no respect for me doesn't mean much. You don't respect no, only church. in debates, not as a person, Shaka. Yeah. Not not as a person. Like if I right. see you. Oh, 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 you talking about you talking about debate wise? Okay, no problem. About, I'm not talking about it as a person. Like right. when I, I remember when I seen you in the gym in front of the school that time, and we chopped it up for a second. I'm not. I'm just talking about. Okay. From All right. Point. I respect that. Okay. I, I respect. Yeah. That. All right. Time. 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 Right. Time's the fact, up. Look, the time's fact up. that you lost this debate. The fact that you lost this debate. Don't hold it against me. Shaka. Time's up. Time's up. Can I answer this question though? Yeah. Go ahead. Answer. Go ahead. So the the question excuse me the thing you brought out with the amino pope and proverbs didn't bother me the, the subject matter outside of violating the rules of the debate and i just wanted to point out that you did it that and i did it on purpose if you ask sonetta he'll tell you i text him and said i'm about to f this up because i just wanted the people to know that you was getting off subject the proverbs versus amino pope i already have it in my slide if i was to share my screen i already i had it in my slide with jabari the argument is a historical timeline one. An Egyptologist by the name of Patrick Clark already broke this down. If you want the article, you send me your email, I'll send it to you. When you adjust the timeline, you'll see that Proverbs comes before Aminopope. So the argument, be, and because they're basing it off a three timeline, I think CEC, hold on, I'm just pulling it up here. The, C, the conventional timelines are the CEC, the three age system, the Stone Bronze, excuse me, and Manitos uh, timeline. And there's problems with all three of them. Those three timelines don't even agree, even agree. If you take, if you do someone that do the- I have a question for you about your source. How old is your source? This, this Egypt that you're um, I would have, that source? I would say it's in- Don't say it, it should be out there. It should be on there because no, you're probably my, reading an outdated source. No, it's in the, it's in my PowerPoint. It's in the 2000s. Right, no, are we saying it's in the 2000s? Okay, yeah, I didn't I'll, I'll pull it. Yeah, I'll, if you send right. me your, your joint, I'll send it to you, the, the guy's name. I think he's, okay. Uh, yeah, the guy's right. name is Patrick Clark. Instructions, I'm sorry, is written by Patrick Clark, who is an Egyptologist. Mm -hmm. And so they point out the flaws in the timeline, which even when you and I first debated on the street, right. and I told you about the timeline, you agree with me that the timeline was not in agreements with each other. Because you can have the king's list, but you have pharaohs in Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt ruling at the same time. So that's not accurate. And when the timeline is adjusted, the Amina Pope time, excuse me, the Proverbs takes precedence over Amina Pope. So hey, I'm going to stop. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to stop this right here. Stop, right. stop, 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 stop. Now it's Captain Tazaria. If you okay. want to question Shaka, I'll okay. put you on the clock for seven minutes. Do you have any questions for Shaka, my brother? Um, I'll... I, I probably won't need the whole time. I probably only got like two questions. All right. All right. Tim, when do you want to start? I'm going to start now. All right. Go ahead. Um, in your third and your second and third round, you was bringing up the pyramid and how it reads and stuff like that. How would you make what you presented today applicable in real time in society? Like, how would you do that? Uh, it's, it's pretty easy um, for the most part. The first thing that you have to do is it's very important to get the language right. 
When the language is not right, you end up running in circles trying to solve a problem that you're not equipped to solve because language and psychology go together, right? So the first thing you have to do is get the language right. And the reason I pointed to the pyramid was because I wanted people to see that, I wanted people to understand what it represents and how it relates to mental health. There's a direct connection. You cannot build a stable, and the key word is stable. You cannot build a stable civilization that outlasts and lives longer than all other civilizations in recorded history. You can't do that with mentally ill people. You can only do that with people who have a sound mind and who have stability inside. That is what is missing from the black community. Stability, psychological stability, moral stability. And white people know this. They're not stupid. The only people who don't know it are, is our community. That's why we're the laughing stocks of the world. That's why you walk into our communities and we look crazy because we're not psychologically stable, right? Just look at the way the way we behave in the streets, the things that we do to each other. We're, we're not stable. And so I showed that pyramid so that people could understand the correlation, the fact that they use the same word for character and for building up people and for engineering societies is the same word they use for the slope of the pyramid. So, right, that, if you, right so that if you look at the I'm name right, of the I'm pyramid, right which I'm is good, Sinifu Shining. I'm good right there. Right. Okay. So now with that said, can you demonstrate who from the comedic side, whether it's you or someone else, like we, as the Israelites, we actively go out to push what we believe in. Right. Can you show who actively goes out and push the things that you said? Like in the streets, in the communities, who's act are you doing that? Uh, I must be because all the people in the streets and communities come up to me when I'm in the street. So somehow I'm reaching them. So I mean, I don't think I personally don't think that um the fact that you are standing on a street corner, I mean, there are people that sell bean pies on the street corner. I think the average person who is selling something on the corner would much rather be selling something in a store or selling it online, brick and mortar, or one or the other, than being out on the street corner. Street corner, uh, uh, street corner speaking, has always been considered bottom of the barrel. You know what I mean? I'm not saying our greatest didn't do it. Nine out of ten, they did it for whatever reasons. But the the, the place where, where where a lot of this is taking place. Is, is it in the street? Yeah, it's in the street. You know, we were famous for being on 125th Street. We know House of Contents was out there for years. You know, we got you and me on right. video in right. the street. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Garfield, I don't have no more questions. I'm good. All righty. So um, at this moment, hold on, let me stop this, reset it. All right. Uh, I, I have a question for both of them. If no we problem. up to that, Garfield. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You can ask your question. Um, I would like to ask, um, Shaka, first thing I want to say, when you first opened up in your first round, I was a little confused. But now I understand when you were talking about the psychology, I was like, damn, Shaka, get on point, get on topic. And then you tied it all together when you got to part three. Talk yes. about how important that was when you was talking about the mental health and, and all these other things. And then you showed it in part three right in ancient Kemet, dealing with the uh, pyramid. How important was that, brother? Well, actually, I showed it before that when I referenced um, the introduction to Amina Mope and Miriam yes. Lickstein, when, it, when, she, when she spoke about right thinking and right action. That's the reason I referenced that so early. Really, I shouldn't have had to go any further than that. The debate was actually won at that moment. For anybody who has any in intelligence, the debate was over. It really was. Everything else was superfluous. And I just went through the, the, I went through the machinations. But the reality of it is that it's really what you call an umbrella problem. If you can't ground zero your problem, you're going to be confusing symptoms with the actual problem. And you're All going right, to miss you. it. I'm good. I just you're wanted to ask that because um, a lot of people would think you was off topic like me, but come to find out you was right on point. So Captain Tazoria, I have a question for you, brother. Um, Shaka talked about the horse and the buggy. And does that mean that you can use that today? Does that mean it was successful? Your response was no, because technology changes and we got to catch up to date with the technology. So would that be a flaw in your Bible? Because you teach and the Bible teach that the sky is going to crack open and horses and chariots is going to come from the sky. So are there literally horses and chariots? Horses and buggy. <laughs> because you can't say... Oh, no, because we got cars now. But the Bible says horses and chariots. So is it going to be horses and chariots, brother? Or we can't use the word horses no more because we in a new 
time period, but that's not what the Bible says. It said horses and chariot. Talk to me. I see Sarnetta drunk the same shit Shaka did today. He had to have drunk the same shit. Um, when you read the Bible, the Bible also say, if I read Acts 1 and 9, it says, and when he looked up and spoke these things while they beheld, he was taken up in the cloud, received him out of their sight. So as it says a cloud, am I looking for a cloud to come back? No, I'm not, because I understand the metaphor. Chariot is a metaphor. When they tell you to go get a sword, it's not talk about a literal sword, it's talk about getting something to fight because it's a metaphor for um, defending yourself. It's a metaphor for fighting. So the chariots and horses that you see in the scriptures in Revelation the seven chapter, excuse me, the sixth chapter, it talks about a black horse, a red horse, and a pale horse. All of them are metaphors. It's visions, it's dreams, it's to be interpreted to something that happens. So how, how do you determine between hey, what's hey, a metaphor? No, 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 Stop mm -hmm. right here. I got a, I got a question for both of you guys, and then we're gonna go to closing arguments. This is a simple question, and it's the same question for both of you guys. Okay. What is one thing within the comedic writings that you would apply right now to this society, right now to our community that would benefit us the most? That's to Shaka Amos first. That's the shock I'm most first. Yes. The very first thing that I would do is I would reintroduce the black community to the original scripture from which the Bible came. Right? So um, it's kind of like I was talking to someone yesterday. Or I don't know who it was, but my thing is that if they went into the comedic literature to take things out, that means they're editing, right? How do you know they took out the best stuff? Maybe they left the best stuff in the original corpus. So if there are things in the original corpus that can solve all of our problems, it only makes sense to leave the copy alone and go back into the original corpus. And when you go back into the original corpus, it's going to blow your mind because that's where you're going to see all the answers that will solve your problem. All, all of right. the answers that will solve our problems are in the original text. But if All you right. don't notice that, because my, my last question, I'm going to say the last thing. My last question to Tudoria, which I wanted to ask and never got to, was... No, 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 I just wanted you to answer that question. There's no more questions after this one. So, Who's that person, man? Who is that? Hold on there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. All right. All right. That's the question to me, right, Garfield? Yeah, the la the question to you, um, Tazaria, what is one thing... What is the one thing in the Bible that you would use out of scriptures today that would help the entire um, black community? No sweat. Unlike Shaka, that's going to send you out to go do research. I'll just read it. This is Matthew 22, 38. <clears throat> I'm going to read to verse 40, three verses. I'm sorry, verse 37 to 40, four verses. Yahweh I said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Why are those two laws important? What is plaguing the black community is the hatred that we have, the selfishness, the murder, the killing, the robbing. We don't know the lack of compassion, the lack of empathy to feel for somebody when they're in pain. And we don't have that, but we do want people to feel for us. So if we learn to love our brother and sister like we loved ourselves, that would be the start. And that requires action. So as I tell that to people and I do to them what I would want somebody to do to me, I'm not robbing them no more. I'm not selling drugs no more. I'm not sleeping with a woman no more. There's so much. And then in doing that, you keep in every single law that's in the Bible. So to answer your question directly, those four verses are what I would read to them. Hey, thank you so much, brothers. Um, let, we're going to have closing arguments of, for five minutes. I'm going to set the clock. I'm going to start with Shaka Amos with his five minutes closing regarding this topic, this beautiful debate that we just had. Thank God for before that, uh, real quick. I want everybody to know Sarnetta Studios will be doing the after debate. And so this is the first time after this, it will not, we will not be any more videos made. So I welcome to Zaria to come in and drop it. Shaka come in and drop it. Y'all ain't got to stay because you know, we don't do debates after the debate. So it will be a after debate on Sarnetta Studios right after this. Go ahead. All right. 
So Shaka, hold on. Just let me know. Once you start speaking, I'm going to start the clock. All right. You got five minutes to closing argument. Let me mute my mic. Go ahead, my brother. Yeah, I'll mute your mic, Shaka. Hold on, Shaka, before you speak, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, Shaka is going to speak for five minutes, his closing argument, and then Tazariak, and then the debate is completely over. But before Shouldn't you Tazariak that, close out first? Hold on. No, he because, always closed no, out last. He closed no, out last no, no, on the no, other no, one. No. Hold, hold on, hold on, beloved, because he started the debate. He was first. Yeah, I didn't close out last. Uh, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna close out tonight, all right? All right, so hold on. Before they close out or anything, I want to say to everybody that participated in this debate, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being a, a wonderful audience and following the rules. If you came in late, Shoot me an email tomorrow at askbrothergarfield at gmail.com and I will send you a full copy of this debate. All right. I'm going to say that again. If you came in late and you want to see the entire debate, shoot me an email and I will send you the entire debate. It's brother, askbrothergarfield at gmail.com. Ask and one more thing we got Sanchez going up against Unk coming up. And then we got Pastor Bennett versus um, Chris Harris. So that's coming up as well. All right, cool. All right. I was going to tell you I wanted to debate Chris Harris Memorial Day weekend that Sunday. But since you go have him with Pastor Bennett, because I need to put that work in. But anyway, Shaka Amos, you got five minutes, beloved. I'll start the clock whenever you're ready, and we going. Let's go. Okay, give me one second. Slide show. Hey, Brandon, Ashley, you're late. So since you just came in, just send me an email at askbrothergarfield at gmail.com and I will send you a copy of the entire debate. Anyone who just came in late, email me at askbrothergarfield at gmail.com. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Are you ready? Go ahead, beloved. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So what I'm going to do, since he wanted to read from inside uh, uh, his uh, text, I'm going to read from the Sebayet so they can hear the literature and see what it says. Okay? This is chapter 30 from Aminimo. It's the final chapter. It's a very, very long chapter. Okay? In fact, I'll just give you a quick... Uh, all of this is Aminimo. People only ever hear about the few that ended up in Proverbs. It's very long. Okay? But I want to read the last part too so you can see what it says, how important these sebayets are. It says, mark for yourself these 30 chapters. They please, they instruct. They are the foremost of all books. The text is telling you they are the foremost of all books. They teach the ignorant. Like to Zoria. If they are read to an ignorant man, he will be purified through them. Seize them. This is why he laughed at me about telling the people to do research. What do you think is the main thing missing from the black community? Guidance without research equals what? There's a shitload of ignorance. If they are read to an ignorant man, he will be purified through them. Seize them. Put them in your mind. And, and have men interpret them, explaining as a teacher, as to a scribe who, who is experienced in his position, he will find himself worthy of being a courtier. That's what this whole thing was about. It was about training men to be courtiers, making each of us worthy of operating within the court of a king. That means you have to be a highly capable human being and you, your behavior and your self-control has to be at a high level. That's what it was teaching us, how to be men. But if you don't read the Sebayes, most of you have never heard that before. But there's so much more in it. There's so much more in it that tells you how to behave. Do not expose a widow if you have caught her in the fields, nor fail to give her away if she is accused. Right? Do not turn a stranger away from your oil jar. Right? Do not let yourself be reported to God when he rises with the words, another young man has reposted an elder. In other words, don't disrespect an elder. That's what it tells you. Do not repost someone older than you, for he has seen the sun before you. Okay? This whole thing is about character. The whole entire thing. Okay? So, and, and it says right here, 
and give a hand to an old man filled with beer. Respect him as his children would. It's telling you about your character. It's raising you up in right behavior so that you don't get caught out there with bad mistakes because of your character. Okay? It says what else? Uh, 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 it even it gives you specific rules. Do not stay in a tavern and join someone greater than you. So it's telling you there's a mode of behavior, things you should not do in life. If you go to a party, don't try to commiserate too much with people that are greater than you there because you might end up doing yourself more harm than good, right? How fortunate is he? A perfect example. Uh, 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 Tazoriak went and hooked up with this dude, uh, uh, WAC 100, and look what ended up happening. WAC 100 ended up eating, eating him a new ass all over the internet, making him look bad. That's what this, if he would have read that by yet, he would have known not to do that. This is what I'm talking, it's little things. It's little things that undo a person, right? Do not jeer at a blind man or tease a dwarf, neither interfere with the condition of a cripple. It's telling you what, how to be as a human being. And there's tons of this stuff. That's why they went in there and took it. They took a few little pieces and left all of the best stuff behind. You idiots want to stay with the copy? Stay with the copy. I don't care. I know where the best stuff is. I'm not going to tell somebody not to eat at a fast food restaurant just because I, I eat at a five-star restaurant. If I can eat at a five-star restaurant, I'm going to eat at a five-star restaurant. If you want to stay with the poor stuff, stay with the poor stuff. And the reason it tells you why you do not tease a cripple or a blind person or a dwarf, it says, do not taunt a man who is in the hand of God, nor scowl at him if he errors. All right? You don't know what, why God put that misfortune on that person. So it's telling you, don't do that. 30 seconds. Okay, not a problem, right? Do not allow your discussions to be brought outside so that your heart will not be grieved, okay? The heart of a man is the beak of God. So take care not to slight it. That means when God speaks to you, he speaks to his heart. It speaks to him, he speaks to your heart, okay? Um, what else? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, if you are satisfied with false words, uh, enjoy yourself with your spittle. In other words, it's... Don't speak too much if you're like to Zoriak is constantly saying things that are untrue, right? It's telling you, hey, if that's what you enjoy doing, and you know, enjoy the saliva with what you do it, because you're gonna have to reap time, the rewards. Time, time, time. Okay. You went over like five seconds. Okay, um, no I'll, problem. Do the, I'll do the same for you. Thank you, brother Shaka Amos. Beautiful job tonight. I appreciate your presence. Peace and love to you. Um, Shak, um, Captain Tazariak, you're up, beloved. You have your five minute clothing remarks. And then Sarnetta, you could start the show now. And by the time you're, he's done, you know, we could get everybody to go over there so we could talk about this in the after debate show. All right. So, um, Captain, as soon as you start speaking, I will start the clock. I appreciate Shaka. You should have did that shit in the first round. Oh, that shit you just said, you did your closing. You, he's definitely retarded because he did the stuff in the closeout what he should have did in the first round and brother if y'all y'all go back and watch this debate this brother had about 10 slides 10 slides he was repeating shit he spent the first five minutes on mental health but didn't show how Kemet actively does the work for mental health where we can go out and show active work for mental health within the bible i'm convinced this nigga's retarded but in his own mind he gonna show you so I ain't gonna get over that slack. <laughs> you stupid man. Go ahead, man. So, no, this is me, Shaka. You funny, dude. You funny, dude. I I ain't mad at you. Like even so, like even bringing up like, but what you did in that closeout is what you really should have did in the beginning. I think that like a lot of people make it seem like this debate was a trick bag because the title was you can't talk about the Bible, and then forgetting the title was also you can't I can't talk about Kemet. The point was to just you put on the table your information that benefits black people, whether it be history, scripture or otherwise. And I do the same exact thing without the bashing. I knew that if I left this debate the normal way without putting that stipulation, you could say I up the scholarship because it would have just been a typical. If you go back into the years of the HOK and look at every time an Israelite and a Kemet cat integrated or battled anybody it always just came down to you copied us this didn't exist this was gay that was this that was this so i wanted to do something a little bit more different where it forced us to just speak in a different fashion and for the even the people that say like they want their money or it wasn't a good debate it shows maybe 
the mental capacity to where you just want to be entertained in a shit show instead of receiving the information, you might want to update your palette of intelligence. Because I guarantee you, the, the people that I brought out, you never heard of. You never heard of the George Bryan. You never heard of the men and women that I mentioned that was integral and in giving us a blueprint for how we can live today. Everything I brought out was before integration. Those were the real Christians or the real Israelites or those that were inspired by God, those that knew they was in captivity, but we still had each other. And the Bible was their foundation. So in 2023, we're still in captivity, but we do have each other. And the Bible is our inspiration. And it should have been that simple. This brother didn't show anything. I showed everything. I appreciate everybody coming to this uh, debate platform. Uh, Shaka, again, from a from a personal perspective, I have respect for you. But from a debate perspective, you're going to have to listen. If you need some classes, I taught Polite how to debate, too. So if you need some classes on how to debate, just hit me up, man. I will Listen, I will coach you. Hey, yo, you can go have a good cry. So you you can't, go have a good first, cry. The first rule of debating hold, hold, hold is go have a good cry. Jack. You got to let it first, finish. You got to right, let it finish. First rules of debating. Well, technically, I interrupted you first because you didn't stick to the rules. So I'm going to give you a pass on that. I'm not even going to say that. See, that's how professional I am. Okay. So with that, I you a professional loser? Yeah. <laughs> you, after All I right. So All right. Thank you. Don't count. Okay. All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Sarnetta is going to start a live stream now so we could do an after party. Captain Tazaria and Brother Shaka Amos is um is encouraged to join the after show. It's, we're not going to do a, another debate, but people are going to pick sides and whatever. I would I, I personally I would have to watch it over as a moderator, I'm more concerned about people getting off mic and interrupting right. the debate. That, that's wise. So, that's wise, Garfield. Yeah, so I'm gonna watch a debate over so I could get into what people are saying and looking at the slides and look. I gotta look at the flyer and get the topic in my brain properly and make sure it resonates. <laughs> and then I'm watching each round. But peace and love to everybody, man. Sarnetta, where you at? Okay, you don't need to watch this over again. Stop lying. Come on, man. <laughs> Garfield, I'm I'm going live right now. People over there waiting like a bug. <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, hey, Sarnetta. Hey, Sarnetta. Hold, hold on, hold on. Sarnetta, send that right now, Pop. Captain, now. you want to come in and let the people know how you won? You ain't got to stay. Shaka, you could do the same thing. Now, after this stream tonight, there's no videos going to be made on our side. I hope not, Shaka. We do not make debates after the debate. Because right. that's hold when on, you can hold tell on, who hold lost. On. Hold on, Sonata, one second. For everybody who came in late, shoot me an email, and, and probably like in an hour or two, if not early in the morning, 7 o'clock Eastern, I'll shoot you a copy of the entire debate. Yes, and we're going to say that yes, on my channel as well. Yes, yes. So anybody who didn't see it, yes, email me at Ask Brother. Hold Put the poll in the <laughs> chat. Put the poll in the chat. No, everybody Put left the poll already. here. Hey, everybody Sonata, I'm not going to call you again, Sonetta. Everybody, everybody, you're not allowed to come off mic, though, beloved. Sarnetta. Who is yes, that? Is yes, that Shaka? Shaka? Oh, Sarnetta, Shaka. call me. Sarnetta, call me immediately, like right now, before you do anything else. Call me. All yes, right. boss. <laughs> oh. hey, he Shaka, he need, Shaka, he need a shoulder. He need a shoulder. Nah, <laughs> I want to ask him. No, I got to ask him a question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, close, let, me close, let me close out the debate. Let me close out the screen. Okay. Y'all can keep talking. <laughs> I want to close out the recording. But I say thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. And if you want a copy of the debate, ask Brother Garfield at gmail.com. And if you came in late, you could watch a replay of the debate. Peace and love. Thank you. And sorry I had to do that to you, Tazoria. <laughs> <laughs>